All right, welcome back everyone to the Crazy Crafter live stream. Uh, my name is Colin Bresti and I am the Crazy Crafter. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome back. Uh, hello everyone out there. Uh, welcome to the stream. Uh, good, good, good morning and good evening, good afternoon to uh, uh, my fellow co-host here, joined as always by Nat One Videos, Michael Patterson. How you doing, mate? I'm doing good, very good. Yay! Myself crafting uh, already. <laughs> crafting already. Of course, you're already at it. Um, and then uh, Daniel, uh, Daniel uh, West. Welcome, welcome back, my friend. How you doing? Uh, I'm doing well. I apparently need to open up a tab and, and learn some Latin. <laughs> right, it's new for me. I'm stuff. Yeah, it's a little surprise. I've, I've got every, going for everyone. It's a it's a little like last minute thing that I threw together, but I thought it'd be kind of fun uh, fun, fun to do that today. I had to give you a, a proper a proper label. The Maximus is just because I, it sounded better than. Uh, the uh the other uh, it was it was going to be operante uh ex uh, ex ex oh my god explode explodimi it's supposed to be extraordinary but i was just like maximus sounds cooler and it reminds me of gladiator so i'm going with that um, are you not entertained Colin? are you not oh i am entertained and speaking of Excellent. entertained uh welcome back to the crazy crafter live stream john helsenfeld is uh is back with us ladies and gentlemen john how you doing brother i'm doing great thank you <laughs> great Welcome, welcome back. You're back for more. You're a glutton for punishment. Yeah, absolutely. Always am. Mm, excellent. Um, and welcome to all of you out there in the crazy crafter uh, uh, land. <laughs> um, thank, thank you for joining us uh, this morning, this afternoon, this evening, wherever you may be. Um, if you're new to the channel, uh, please uh, be sure to let us know that you're new and introduce yourself. We'd love to know. Uh, as much as you're uh, willing to share with us uh, where you're from, what you're working on today, if you're not working on this awesome uh, medieval wagon build that John's going to walk us through here in just a few minutes. But uh, also, if you're new to the stream, uh, this uh, the Crazy Crafter channel is a, a weekly live stream, um, and it's it's your all, uh, all-encompassing weekly, uh, live weekly to uh terrain tutorials every sunday right we're going to feature you you guys from from the crafting community and other prominent members too like uh we feature everyone's builds on this channel uh because everyone's got cool stuff everyone is uh everyone's got some some mad skills out there and we want to showcase you guys so if you are interested in joining us on the live stream and you've got a cool build you can always email me at crazycrafterchannel1983 at gmail.com. You can tag me on Instagram uh, at crazy.crafter.livestream, uh, and we'd love to love to have you on on the network um, and and uh, have you guys on the show. All right. Uh, that being said, what are we working on today, John? What are we crafting? Okay, we're going to craft this uh, wagon. I uh, put in. I did this. Uh, I think like two weeks ago, but. Um... Anyhow, we're going to go ahead and do a wagon. I'm going to go ahead and drop it in here. I don't Woo! know how well you'll be able to see it. Oh, we can but see it. But it's going to have a removable top. And this is just made out of glue and tissue paper, toilet paper, whatever whatever you have. Uh, real easy to do. The inside of the wagon is just hollow. That way you can put whatever you want in there. You can have objectives, minis. <clears throat> Candy, I don't know, whatever. Candy, <laughs> you say candy, yeah, whatever you okay. want, whatever you want. I want candy, and, uh, I want candy in my objectives. That sounds great. That's right. that's right, yeah. So, that's what we're going to build. That's what we're building today. That's awesome. Um, I started so I, I've kind of got this new uh kind of workflow that I'm, I'm working on is uh, I'm trying to build. A prototype every week before the the guest comes on um a because we're you know as we do the stream and we we uh we work on it we're trying to figure out ways to make and create better content um for you guys uh, to follow follow along and for your builds and it also helps us uh this was really helpful this week john jumped on a little extra <laughs> he had some extra time with us so thank you for jumping on and kind of walking us through but i've got my i haven't added a top side here i'm gonna add try to add that today um, but it's kind of nice. We're if if the build requires a little bit of extra build time, then we'll we'll we we we're gonna start tackling it a little bit ahead of time, so you guys can see at least at least where it's headed if we don't finish it and complete it on the stream. Um, but thank you for taking that extra time, John. This is gonna be a really fun build. I love this wagon. This wagon 
you can put on the tabletop for like I I mean I I obviously I, in my 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 initial thought being an avid D and D player is it goes on the medieval tabletop and it's a medieval wagon, but you could throw this on like if you're doing a western campaign, dude, like these look great. The versatility of these wagons is really cool, and I I like the fact that um you know the way John made his with the removable top, like you you have you have objectives that you can put inside. And uh, you can make make a make it a pretty fun interactive piece for for the players on the tabletop. They look they look fantastic. They look There's fantastic. There's actually a, a game um, called I think it's called Dracula's America. <laughs> Dracula's that, America. <laughs> yeah, it takes place shortly after the Civil Civil War, uh, and it's a sort of a small skirmish game, a la like uh, Frostgrave. And uh, the the rule book has been in my Amazon wish list for quite a while, and so. I need to build a couple of Western towns so I can have vampires and six shooters. Nice. nice. And some covered wagons. Uh, Gorilla Miniatures has that on his uh, his page. His oh, YouTube. Yeah? yeah, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, he's awesome. I, I watch him all the time. Gorilla, Mil Gorilla Miniatures? Yeah, he does a lot of tabletop. He's mostly tabletop. Yeah, Gorilla, Gorilla is it Miniatures? I thought it was Gorilla Gaming. Just look it up. I'll look it up. We'll look it up. Yeah, yeah. We'll look, look it, it up. up. You know who I'm talking about. Ash. Ash yeah. is who, who does it. He's been in the game forever for mm. a long time. Uh, I'm looking. I'm looking at the chat here real quick too. And um, um, yeah, the the Gridmark Underhive tutorials is what immersive game, uh, immersive uh, world uh, crafters working on. Getting grimy, rusty, manky, and disgusting. That sounds fun. Uh, Pickle Jar is editing a tutorial. No painting for me tonight. Oh, he's editing. Yep. Ah yes, the life, the never-ending life of a content creator. Edit well, my friend. Uh, we'll paint for you tonight. <laughs> Hashtag candy stash. Yes, that there. We, can we get that trending on social media for for us crafters? All terrain should have um, should have uh, should should have candy stashed away in it somewhere. Or what I always wanted to do. They have those down little in the well. Yeah, down in the well. I want to create. I'm gonna do it, and uh, I want to do it on the stream here at some point where you you get that little mirror and you put the item down inside and it projects it up and it looks like you can grab it on top, but it's not there. So maybe I do that with like my uh, with my campaign one day. My buddies where they're like, oh look, piece of candy, and it's like. Um, uh, you can't grab, grab it. I know. Hashtag no candy illusionary candy. No candy for you. No candy for you. Okay. Um, awesome. Well, um, what's, what's the first, what's the, the first, um, um, step oh, before we get into the first step, if you guys are curious about this, um, the, um, measurements for the build, I, I added them last night to the stream. So they can be found in the description below. And um, if you f are following along after the fact and you're watching a recording of this live stream, you can find the details of what you need specifically. Always a good idea to prep prep the materials ahead of time as you're going along. That way you can just follow along John here as he guides us through this amazing wagon build. With that, John Hosenfeld, um, what's our first step? Okay. Um, well, the first step will be you're going to – most of us in the U.S. are going to have sheets – so any sheet will do. Uh, you can have, I've seen them. I've used them in two inches, inch, three quarters, half inch, whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, this is what you're going to have. Now, this film on here, we're going to remove this film. That's going to be the first step is basically cut it, true it up. It don't have to be absolutely perfect. As long as there's no real big gaps, it's fine, mm. you know. So you don't have to like drive yourself crazy over stuff like that. Just as long as it's pretty close. So true it up, get it ready. And we're going to go ahead and uh, remove this uh, film that's on it. Okay. That's important. Get rid of it, especially when you start texturing. Yeah. It's going to kind of mess you up a little bit. Now, I went ahead and always whenever you're, whenever you start on your Proxon, make sure you're true. Make sure your wire is true. Mm. Did this already. Uh, that way I don't have to mess with it, but yeah, just do a real quick check. Make sure that your wire is true. Make sure you got nice tension. And if, if for those, for those folks uh, that may have never um, made sure it's true before, are you just using uh, the 90 degree, 90 degree um, uh, ruler there to, to measure that, John? Yeah, cool. basically just, well, you can cheat with this shifting lands uh, guider pro. As long as this is 90 degree to this, 
you just basically just bring this on in and now I can see that that's 90 degrees right there. That's touching at the same time at the top and the bottom. So then I can back this up. This sideways here is what gives a lot of people problems. The reason why is because when they, when they made this, it's not really, it just sits in plastic, plastic moves. So this thing bends and warps. Yeah. You can put a shim in here. This is basically just a beer can piece of aluminum. And it's what I, what I do is I put it in right here on the side, whichever way that this wire is off, it's either going to be off to the right mm -hmm. or to the left. Okay. Just play with it. Use a shim, whatever kind of shim you want. It, it could be aluminum. I use aluminum because they just last forever, but you can have a piece of wood stick in there, whatever. And anyhow, that's how you're going to get your, get your 90 degrees. Okay. So I kind of fold with that. So I know that this is 90. <laughs> I wouldn't yank on this really just try to do it here. If try to fix it on here, don't do it like really like pull on that or nothing. Cause I don't know, it might work for you, but I'd be afraid of messing something up, cracking something, making it worse. It's off here because mm. there's such a big gap in here. This is where you're off. It's not really, I don't think it's quite as much the mounting as much as it's this slot in this slide right here, this slide guide. Gotcha. So, so anyhow, cool. Uh, so then what we're going to do is just remove that plastic. And I like to turn, I like to turn the, uh, the heat up a good bit on here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let me see. I'm going to, I'm not really particular. I'm just going to kind of take it up, but you do want to, you want to make sure it's hot because if it's kind of cold, when you run through a big thick piece like this, if it's cold, your wire is going to jump like this as you're going through. Yep. And as it does that, it's going to leave those lines. Now that might not be a big deal if you can hide it on the other side, but if you if you're wanting both sides to be showed, you kind of don't want that. So if you're getting this kind of a kind of like you can see it, it's like a movement in there. Uh, it's just because you're not hot enough. You just got to crank the heat up a little bit. So I'm going to crank it up a good bit. Turn it Stick up. It in here. We'll see what happens. Turn the heat we'll up. See. We'll see what happens here. Let's run this through. That's what we do. We turn the heat up. Through, ready to go. And I'm just going around. Ooh, that's hot, boy. Ooh. Ooh. That's, hot. that's hot. That'll work. Make, making cuts so with the proxon is the, really uh, uh, satisfying. <laughs> You're living that sweet proxon life now, brother. Honestly. Yeah. No How you like right that cross on, Michael? You're loving it, yeah, huh? I am loving it. Yeah, yeah. I am. I mean, I'm. I can't let go of the carving knife, but I am loving it for sure. I, I, I have a, I, ha, I have a newfound uh, appreciation uh, for for my my good buddy Michael. I, uh, I ordered, um, I ordered a carving set, um, a wood carving set uh, to play around with it, and I, uh, Michael and I hung out for a little bit yesterday. <laughs> and uh i carved for the first time and i was just like oh man it's it works really well for shaping foam but good grief i was just like uh, the the um uh what you were able to work with with that is it's just kind of the true testament of 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 our of our hobby of our hobby and the art form is what work with what you got and i think uh it's just it's it was amazing to to think of all the amazing things you crafted with just that carving knife prior to the proxon so well, I'm, yeah. I'm, I've joined the dark side now. <laughs> <laughs> you hey, you won't go back. I'm, I promise you that. And then get you one of those handheld, uh, the wire cutters, the handheld. Oh, oh man. man, they're nice too. I mean, they're real nice. All right. So for all of those that are uninitiated in the in the <laughs> Proxon cult, I will <laughs> I will back you up, and you can just watch me do stuff with like knives. Or whatever, like boring, <laughs> boring oh, band, hey, boring band saws in the background. No big deal. No big deal. Hey, I used I used that for years, years. Utility knife, uh, band saws. When we were at the shop, yeah, I used all that. Mm -hmm. You know, I've only had this prox on for about, I don't know, it it ain't been long. About two years, maybe. I'd want to say, about two years. And yeah, I mean. 
I do love it though. It makes it easy. So anyhow, here's your piece. Okay. I don't know if you can see it. So that's prepped. That's ready to go. Now what I would do is I would go ahead and, and get my cut my quarter off. Now what I would do is I would get, I'm not going to do that because I already did it. It'd just take too much time. But anyhow, what I would do to go ahead and get my quarter inch thick cut of stock is this roller here. If you look at it, this roller will go all the way to the end. See how this here, this goes all the way to the end right here. Uh, that's important whenever you're measuring off your rip fence, because that's what you want. You don't want a gap like a regular roller. That's more for drafting, things like that. Whenever you're doing this and you're going to go pick up a roller, that's what these are made for. These are made for basically your roller starts clear at this end here mm. and it goes all the way down. Okay. Like you're saying a roller that's for drafting, there'll be a piece of plastic here. That's that ain't going to be any good that way. I can take this, set this right up against my rip fence yep. and I can get whatever I want. Quarter inch, half inch. I'm just going to go right off of this rip fence. So I'm not even going to make any marks or anything. I'm just going to go in. So if I want to do a quarter inch, I'm just going to come in, get my quarter inch. That's close enough. And then I would go ahead and just make my cut. This one here, I would get two cuts out of this. I would have two quarter inch and one eighth inch around eighth inch if I would cut this, but I'm not going to, but so then when I get done, this is what, I, what you're going to wind up with. You're going to wind up with two pieces out of that one piece quarter inch thick. Okay. And that's going to be your stock. That way you can go ahead and start on that wagons for days after that. That'll be, that's, that'll make quite a few little wagons right there. Yes, it would. Yes, it would. So if you look here, we're going to be cutting, the sides, the sides on this wagon will be this here. This is what I'm calling the sides, okay? Um, let me go over this real quick, just to, these are gonna be the sides, boom, boom, okay? That's the sides. Now, you're gonna have a bottom piece, which actually starts from here to here, mm -hmm. okay? That's your bottom piece, all right? You're going to have what's called a bottom plate, which is this piece here. This is your bottom plate. Okay. Yep. And I didn't initiate anything on these pieces. Basically, your, your, uh, let me see, your middle supports are these pieces. Now, this is going to come in later on why you need that, but that'll go in there like that. That's your, this will be your middle, middle uh, supports. So we're going to make our first cut. Now, what you want to do, Whenever you're cutting this foam, your foam has a grain. Whenever it's extruded out <laughs> with the grain, yep. uh, this is kind of important because you don't have to do this. It's no big deal, but it does make it easier. If you if you see here, my grain is running vertical on my sides. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what you want is you want your grain to run this way. If I you were going, to, what's that? I got that wrong in mine that like I, I'm literally trying to texture mine and it's making these little bumps. So you're, you're about to explain what I've done wrong. It's okay. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's no big deal. Uh, yeah. It's just going to happen. What you can do, Michael, is if you're, if you're doing individual planks, use yeah. an exacto. Okay. Yeah, I'm using the knife get, for it, yeah. Yeah. Get it in exacto, get in there and now cut your planks out and then go in and try to do that see what you're experiencing is you're going against the grain and that's giving you your lumps i did it a hundred thousand times it was a long time before i even realized that foam even had a grain i just thought it is what it is and that's how it is but over over time you kind of learn that so that's kind of what you want to do you want your grain to go this way now you're going to say well how do i find the grain the grain's real easy to find basically if you push down on this piece there's going to be a soft okay now i can tell you right now this grain is going this way okay because when you're pushing in on that grain it's nice and soft it's just like wood now whenever you push on it here it's solid it's hard that's because the grain is running here and you're now pushing against that grain and it's not giving 
your piece is always going to be your strongest with your grain. So mm. if you're doing like a big project or something like that, it might be smarter to maybe have your grain running this way or have it running this way. You just, you know what I mean? You don't know, depending on how it is now on here, I can tell you, I would want to orient this piece like that because I'm cutting vertical. Most of my lines are going this way, especially if I'm just going to sculpt it or something. But even if they go this way, it's no big deal. I'm just saying, maybe think about that. It's going to make it easy on you. It's one of those tricks that are, you know, once you do it, it's simple. So I'm going to say, I want my grain to be, I don't know. Let's run it long ways here. So what I'm going to do, my grain is running this way. Okay. So I'm going to lay this piece down. Now I'm going to go ahead and measure my two sides are going to be three and a quarter is going to be my first cut. Okay. That's long ways. So I'm going to go ahead and go three and a quarter. Everyone had their crafting station up and I had crafting viewing station envy. So I was like, fire up the camera so you can, uh, you can see all my, all my craziness too. Oh, look at this. It would help maybe Aziz light. Thank you, Aziz. Much better. All right. There we go. <laughs> can see, well, can see a little um, bit. Stargate. No. Oh, is it Stargate? Everyone into the chat. Is that from Stargate? Oh man, you're gonna get eaten alive. You're gonna get eaten alive. Tell everyone, Michael. What, what, tell Michael, everyone, what that what I just quoted. Fifth element. Fifth element. <laughs> you, 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 you save. We'll we'll say that saved. We'll say that I saved. I, I, I don't know why I made that mistake. Fifth element. Oh man, that's funny. That's funny. Oh, too funny. I nearly lost my nerd credential. Yeah, there. yeah, heck? bro. That was that was hilarious. A risky maneuver. A re Boldly <laughs> shooting that out without. Yeah. Ready. Yep. 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 Okay. Now my next cut will be an inch and a half. Okay. So. Right now, I got my three and a quarter. Just check, check it real quick, three and a quarter. It's now an inch and a half. So I'm gonna check this real quick and that's good. So now let's go ahead and cut three and a half or uh, inch and a half here. I'm gonna make two quick cuts. I like running my procs on kind of a lower temperature. I think you get better cuts that way. It's cleaner. What number? Uh, I, I, what's that? Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, so I was just what number I've been running at about three, two kind of sort of temperature. Yeah. Yeah. It depends on how thick your piece is. But I always found if you run it, you kind of want it to just, you know, it depends on what you're doing, of course. I mean, sometimes it don't matter. But you start running too hot, what will happen is you'll burn the foam away, not foam will back up a little bit mm. you'll start getting like your pieces ain't going to mesh up you know what i mean <laughs> so anyhow so here's two pieces here okay this is going to be the sides of the wagon now my grain is running up you know straight up and down okay which is what i did on the other ones too so i just decided to just keep doing it like that so you know you got your grains are running this way so my plank's going to go this way here's two sides those are done. Three and a quarter, inch and a half, done. We'll just set them over here. So now the next piece we're going to do is going to be the bottom. And if you look on this material cut list, all your thicknesses are the same. Whenever you're doing like a model or something, just kind of stick with the same numbers. You know what I mean? Just make it easy on yourself. You know, mm. that way you don't get crazy. You know, just, just makes it simple. So here's your bottom. Now this is a times one. That means it's one piece three and a quarter by inch and a half. So it's the same thing. So what I'm going to do, I'm sure my grains are running right. Although it don't really matter here. I'm just going to go ahead and do it like this anyhow. I could have put this up here with that, but I, I wanted to initiate that it's the bottom. So anyhow, bam, inch and a half, three and a quarter inch and a half. So that's good. So we're going to make the cut real quick. <laughs> I 
Immersive World Crafter says your nerd card has been revoked there, Michael. <laughs> mm. You well. recovered it. I think you recovered it. I think you recovered it. He was oh, like, wow. wait a minute. Uh, but because also, you're also a fan of Stargate, which is, I also think is, 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 is a, uh, I, is a plus. I, 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 is a plus I'm as well. not going to make it. I'm not gonna make excuses for myself. <laughs> I had a long, I had a long day. I have a two-year-old. I don't know. I didn't, uh, uh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man. So you're gonna. I mean, there's a long, lengthy reapplication process. You'll have to, you know, you'll have fill to up fill forms. to fill out. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Oh man. To I'm just going to have to come up with some really obscure quote that none of you guys get, and then I'll be like, yeah, see? <laughs> <laughs> Challenge accepted. Uh, nerd card status pending review, Bradley is saying. <laughs> uh, it's pending review today. Um, oh, Bradley's saying he shouldn't looked up prices on the Proxon wire cutter. Yeah, it's it's um, it's um one of it – is a, it is a pricier tool to invest in. It does change your crafting game, that's for sure. But that being said, there's a ton of – I did not use – so just to give you an example, Bradley, I didn't use um, XPS Foam for this build. I am using uh, Dollar Store Foam Core. Um, I'm using the Foam Core because it's what I have readily available and um, I was – I just used, used the um, – Use my knife and uh, and ruler and cut my stuff up and prepped it ahead of time. So I I did all my prep work with with uh, a slightly different material and uh, didn't use the proxon. So you can still do the same build without without a proxon, one hundred percent. Well, I would say oh, yeah, it's really about one hundred and twenty, roughly about one hundred and twenty pounds, uh, UK money. Um, I mean, how many of the other things have you bought for 120 quid that you literally use all the time? Right, right. I mean, it, it, it is a chunk of money, but yep. an ex yep. you will never stop using it. it it's, right. It's, it's like yeah. an, X an Xbox 360 or whatever. I mean, you know, where, 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 do, where what do you want to spend your money on? Right. Yes. Yeah, and you know what? It's kind of one of those things. It depends. If you're like a real big train guy, you might not need it. You know what I mean? If you're wanting to get into smaller models, actual, this thing here will build anything. It really will. And if you're wanting to get into like actual modeling, building models and stuff like that, you can't go wrong with this. You really need it. Even even just to get your, the thicknesses, it's an absolute necessity to do that. And if any kind of like, any kind of piece you're going to need it. You know what I mean? That's just yeah. all there is. There's no way around it, you know. But if you're wanting to do big terrain and you're just wanting to, hell, I mean, I used the freaking <laughs> wire cutter for years and sandpaper and, and X-Acto knives on your train, and it yep. worked out just fine. Uh, okay, so I'm finishing up the uh, middle support. So we're going to do another inch and a half. Okay. And then this will be done. I'm just cutting the four out. See how that moved on me? Mm. Actually, you got to watch. Go ahead and double check and double check before you run it through. That way you don't, you ain't messing around with it. Yep, uh, yep. Uh -huh. Check twice, cut once. <laughs> so here's my four pieces right here. So pretty much this, this wagon's pretty much ready to go. It's got all the pieces on it. I'm going to do the plate real quick. So anyhow, here's four pieces right here. Boom, boom, boom. Now my grain is running because these are your four pieces. My grain is running this way because I want my vertical, the door's vertical. Everything's vertical. So anyhow, grain orientation is this way. That's important on this too. So let me see here. So I got four middle supports, quarter inch thick. Okay. Now let's do this bottom. Let me see. Bottom plate, front, back. I got the bottom. And I think I'm good to go. Nice. Mm -hmm. Do it. Do it. Yep. So let me see here. So I think we're good. Now we're just going to basically kind of put this thing together now what i'm going to do here 
this is going to be kind of real quick, but I'm going to, I'm going to sketch in the sides because see, see these sides right here. See how they're sweeping. Yes. And actually I found this, this model here was copied off of uh, ESO elder scrolls online. Uh, this is okay. one of their wagons. It's not exactly, but this part was part of theirs. Basically, I just went on ESO, looked around, and ESO fashion, too, is a real good way to do that. But anyhow, with this sweeping right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this sweep into it. Okay. Are you using the Proxon to put the sweep in? Is that what you're going to do? Yeah, I'm going to use a Proxon. I'll just layer them up like this. So what I'm going to want to do is you want a vertical. You want this part to be be 90 and then it sweeps out. You know what I mean? I think this here is, I can't remember offhand. It don't matter. I'm just going to do this real quick because I don't, this is not really that important to get into it. But you do what kind of want this to be a 90 degree here and here because that's what your pieces are going to come off of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this here. And I'm going to go ahead and measure real quick and put a 90 in. Uh, let's see. I want let me grab a uh, pen here real quick and then we'll put this 90 in. Yep. I'm um Oh, I didn't texture that side. I'm I'm what using What are you doing with yours at the top? I'm I'm taking uh I'm I'm going to use the same uh I'm I'm going to layer it up too. It's something that when uh, John, uh, when I was asking John about the build earlier in the week, when I was kind of doing my my uh, little trial run, um, this this suggestion here, uh, you know, you talk about just stuff that you. I always have these like a doy moments whenever I'm crafting, whenever I come across like a new technique, like uh, or something new to me anyway. And John's suggestion about just stacking the the, the two sides up to tr draw draw and pen it out. Or pencil it out on one side and then he's using the proxon to cut it out but once you layer it up and you make that cut with both sides that you don't have to do the same thing and they're they match you know the it's just the symmetry is easier to achieve so i was just like uh can't believe i've never thought of that before and i it was you know <laughs> uh again something that I'm, I'm taking away from from this build that'll move on to other stuff so that really helped me out john that that's that will extend beyond this build for me Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you can always just stack them. You don't want to stack too high. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you can absolutely just start stacking, and you're uh, you're good to go. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then you make one cut, and that's it. You know, you're done at that point. So I'm going to go three quarters of an inch. I'm just going to make a quick that's mark. So interesting. There and on the back piece, I'm going to do the same. No, I'm not. The back piece, I'm going to do a half inch. That's what it was. So I'm just going to do a half inch. Now, remember, it goes clear to the end here. I'm just going to get kind of funky with it. I have one marker. I can't find it. And it's like a real fine tip, but that's okay. I'm just going to go ahead and... So that's all we need. Now I'm just going to go ahead and run straight down. Don't want to go too too hard on it. Just kind of straight down and I'm going to flip it around straight down. That's my 90. Now all I'm, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to say freehand style. There you go. That's a little steeper angle. Now this one here, I'm going to go up higher. I will come up to about here. Now you can measure this out. I'm not going to get into all this. It's just on what you want to do. Okay, so there's the two pieces right there. Now I'll go ahead and set these on top. Make sure that they're touching. And then what I like to do, stick uh, stick two pins in them. Mm. Okay, and that'll that'll uh, that'll keep them keep them together that way they don't shift on you i'm gonna pop into chat see what's going on yeah so uh looking at the chat actually so we've got several different things saunder is a wizard uh saunder is a wizard who maps um and has 
is throwing out a really good uh, system for what he thinks uh, the default uh, set of, of dungeon tiles might be, and I, I really like it. He's, he's come up with uh, these really nice variations so that you can uh, create a, a whole plethora of uh, of different rooms, and I really, really love that. And then um, Night, Ter uh, Night Terrain is asking, how has the thickness of the Dullesaur form core uh, changed your dimensions? And I, too, am using Dullesaur foam core, and I can speculate on that. Based on, um, based on how I understand this build is going together, um, most of the most of the connections are going to be butt joints, and uh, with with the the foam core butting up against the things from the outside, sort of like this, and and because of that, uh, because the foam core is three six three sixteenths of an inch, and most of the dimensions have been listed at one quarter of an inch, your overall exterior dimensions are going to shrink by about uh, an eighth of an inch total. But as long as the planks are all in, um, cut to the same size, they should all still nest and fit inside of each other. So you're going to lose about an eighth of an inch overall in the, the, the mass, but you're not going to, I think, experience problems where things just don't plain fit together. No, um, I don't think so at all because this is the, the first – I felt like if you stay – just just following Danny's, Danny's recommendation, that's what it did here and everything gelled and fit great so um, yeah yeah should work they're all exterior like butt joints on the construction yep. so like nothing is is really relying um on the on the items to fit uh i, I don't know how to phrase this um i think it works how about that <laughs> i think it works too i think it works too Um, did I just yeah, text you the wrong side? Final cut here, and this is going to be done. Then we're going to kind of glue it together real quick. Then we're just going to move on. But these things, you can bang these out pretty fast, especially if you just go ahead and mark. If you make like, uh, if you get your stock ready, oh, you could have an army of these in no time flat. You really could. Well, yeah, you it's really it's 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 neat, especially with the with the ability to uh if you're cutting it all and ripping it ahead of time like like you're doing here it's it's uh it's a quick build that comes together quite nicely although oh, yeah 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 absolutely now here is uh i don't know should we go over gluing it or i mean pretty much everyone's i'll just go over real quick like how i kind of glue it Sure, because you use the pins, um, yeah. and then I'll give my hot glue tutorial. Okay, okay. So pretty much, here's the piece right here. Everything's fitting. This fits down inside of here. Now you can also you can go a whole different route with 45s, but with this design you can't. I like to do the 45 route myself, but with this design you can't can't really do that. Yeah. The bottom you could, but other than that you can't. But anyhow, so here's your piece. Now, if you look here, you're going to have where it comes up to a point. Pretty much to get that point, you're just going to find the center, okay? I'll show you here. But the way I like to do it is I'm going to, without any kind of like measuring or anything, what I'm going to do is I will come over here, press this down to make sure that that's seated. Mm -hmm. Good enough. Okay. Now I'm going to put a mark. I'm going to mark this here. There's my first mark right there. Now this is going to ensure that this is a flush, flush fit. And I'm going to put a mark right here. Okay. That's going to be a flush fit right there. You could do the same with the other side. So you got the pieces and always kind of like whenever you're doing a model or anything, always kind of test fit, test fit. Everything is huge. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's sound advice, John. I agree. Not yeah, a bad I mean, idea. Yeah. Yeah. Do your test pieces. Now I can pull this out, which I know these are pretty much nineties, but anyhow, 
I could pull this out. Now I know that from here to here, now I'm going to find the center of this piece, which is going to be three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to come over here, three quarters, and I'm going to measure over just to be sure, three quarters. So now this is the center here. I got my three quarters of an inch. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line from here to here. Mm. I'm going to arch that. Okay. Whoa. Uh -oh, I just took a big chunk out of my here. Hold on one moment. Took a chunk out of my side of my wagon. Uh oh. That's going to look good. Though. That's going to look like wear and tear. That's battle damage, you know. Yeah, yep. that's right. That is exactly what that is. Battle, that is damage. battle damage. So here we go. I'm just going to kind of. I'm going to run an arch. It ain't got to be perfect. It's coming to here. That way, them sidewalls are going to match up. Now I'm going to take this piece. I'm not going to do that on the other. I'm just going to go like this. And I'm going to go ahead and run a pin in here. Don't make sure, make sure your pin don't go all the way through because you'll scratch the heck out of your, uh, out of the surface of your uh, proxon. Just down to where you could almost feel it coming out and then back it back in just a little bit. So now I'm just going to make one cut and I'm done with this. Make sure everything's lined up good enough. Turn it on, get your pieces off. Now I'm just going to make one cut starting here because that's where the wall is. So I'm just going to kind of come in and make a rip. Done. Come back over here, make another cut. And they say you don't have to push real hard on this. This ain't going nowhere. This stuff, stuff ain't going nowhere. There you go. So now this is done. So you just measure one piece and stack it, cut it, and it's exactly the same. Done, ready to go. Nice. So, okay, so here's the bottom plate. Here is your two sides. All right, let's put the battle damage side in the front here. I'll battle damage. I'm going to show this piece damage. off. There it is. There it is right there. Shut this off. That would be a good idea. Now, here is your front and your back. Okay. Line these up. I hear the humming. I hear that hum. It sounds great. I'm making, <laughs> I'm making the exact cuts John's talking about right now. Nice. There. Now, to put this together, all I would do is I don't really want to glue it on here, but I got this set up. But the way I would do it would be to do your two sides first. These are nice because these will kind of give it your 90. I mean, you could come in and you can check your 90s on your side. You can get kind of whatever. These I know are going to be, they're going to be 90s. You know how, I mean? how many how many arch supports have you got there, John? Well, this one here is just kind of a, you're going to want, I'll tell you what I would do. Because if you want to add trim to it, I would go ahead and cut out about, let me see, you're going to have your front, back, your two middle supports, cut out six. Cut out six, and what that's going to do is there's going to be, uh, or even 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 five, because what that's going to do is that's going to be your cut. I'll show you. If you're wanting to add trim, that will be your trim too. Okay, I really wasn't going to get into this, but I probably should. With your trim, and I'm going to do that with this one here. With your trim. If you're wanting to add it to make it look nice and it's like, wow, well, how'd you do that? It's real simple. I'm going to come in here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut both of these pieces and I'm going to go ahead and uh, make a little bit of trim work. Now, this is going to be thinner than it should be. I would actually cut another piece, but I'm not worried about it. We're just going to go ahead and we're just going to go ahead and do it. So I'm going to cut off of here, turn this on. Now this is going to be my trim on my piece. Okay. This trim can be anything. It could be around your door. It can be around the sides. It could be real intricate. Hmm. You know, it could be real simple, but it's custom fit to you, the, the face of your piece. 
that's what makes it nice and it's so simple so there's my first cut this will be my second cut and see what that'll be like i said in some of this like once you get used to it man you'll be able to burn and turn stuff out so fast it's crazy burn and turn <laughs> burn and turn <laughs> uh, we back, back in Ireland, um, if you walk through the town centre on a Sunday morning, you have guys screaming out, turn or burn. Turn or burn. <laughs> turn or burn. Turn or burn. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so now we got this. This is going to be your trim, okay? So basically, just take the pieces that you have and just slice a little bit off. That's... That's all, just slice a little bit off of there. Now go ahead and uh, the way I'm going to glue this, and I'll show you that trim later, but the way I'm going to glue this is you're going to have, you got your front, you got your piece here, and you got your two middle supports, okay? Once you get that, that's going to be done. Then when you, whenever you get your sides cut out and you're ready to glue, what I do is I basically, all I do is I just take some glue, put in here, put in here and then i'll wipe it that way you don't have like a big mess the cleaner you you are the better the better off then on a flat surface push both pieces down line up both ends and i'm not i don't want to use that big piece here oh yeah i guess i will stick that in and just push now that'll hold that piece in you can also go at an angle with it like this. I don't know if you guys are seeing that. Come in at an angle like this, and this will help bite. When you do that, you're going to see that glue is going to squirt out in these corners here. That glue will squirt out. Mm. Here's your nice 90 degree bottom, nice and flush. Check your bottom. If you got to put one in here, put one in here. But you got a nice, the smoother and the cleaner your stuff is sometimes, the less you got to fool with. Yeah. And if you're if you're pinning uh, like like John is. He mentions the angles. If you do opposing angles, you really get a, a lock that prevents it from sliding laterally yep. or yep. even even uh, working off the piece. So if you, yep. if you take your angles and sort of shove them in at opposite, like sort of 45s or even 30s, like uh, it can't back out. Mm. Um, and that can be really, really useful for, for locking the foam, uh, sort of like mm -hmm. a pseudo clamping mechanism. Yeah. And I tell you, I use this all the time on all my builds. This is how I, I, I just, this is just how I'm just used to doing it. So here they're going into each other. Now you can also come in the opposite direction. What that does is that's going to lock this up and it's going to be tight. I can see a gap here, but that's not really, it's not because it's tight. I think it's just because it's just beveled a little bit, but I could put one in there, but this is good. This is fine right here. So I would keep moving now. You don't have to stop. That's the thing. Just because you're using uh, uh, regular glue, you can go just as fast as hot glue. I think actually you could almost go a little bit faster in a sense, you know what I mean? Because you're not really cleaning stuff up. You're just going to keep moving. So I'm going to take this piece here, slide that down inside of here. Okay. Now I'm just going to check it. Of course, I'm going to put glue, glue here, here, glue here. I wouldn't put glue on them sides just right here because, you know, you're going to mod podge this anyhow. So you don't really have to go crazy with the glue because your true strength is in your mod podge. You know, I mean, of course you do. I mean, you know, I feel like, put, like I feel like that's cloth. a T a t-shirt waiting to happen. Your true strength is in your mod, your mod podge. <laughs> that is good one. Yeah, <laughs> but it is, you know what I mean? It, it kind is. of is. It is. 100%. John get John gets 10% every time. <laughs> yeah, That's there right. you go. There you go, Fort. Way, Chris baby. Fort's in there. So, there you go. That's that piece. Now, I would probably put a couple more in here. Whatever. But anyhow, that's going to hold it. With that glue, that ain't going nowhere. Flip her around. Keep on going. Drop this piece in. Yeah. Yeah, just drop this one in. Now, they also make what's called T-pens. T-pins are awesome, and they're actually better than these. Yeah, you love those T-pins. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about I with T-pins? I do. I okay. do. Okay, T-pins are the best. That's the ones. If you're going to go out and buy them, 
that's what you want. You want your T-pins. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this in at an angle. Back this up. Stick this piece in. There. I mean, that's ready to go. Now I can come in. I can put these pieces in. Okay. I can do however I want. You know, I can put, I can glue these in after I cut them to come up with the design. Now, what I'm going to do is show you is how you get a, if you look here, see how that's sticking out? I don't know if you can see that. See how that's like raised above this back piece. This is all one piece here. This here is sticking out. I like I like doing that because it adds dimension to your piece, mm -hmm. and it's not really hard to do at all. You can also you can draw it in too, but you just get such a nice look with that. You know, doing it like that. So you have your raised inches. It's kind of like a dynamic, and it's real easy to do. Basically, you would just take this piece, draw your door in, draw in whatever trim you want, however you want. Take an exacto, cut it out. Take that piece and lay it on the side here. And that's all there is to it. And then you have this really cool looking, you know, you can get as, as intricate as you want, really. I mean, why not? And uh, and it looks like, wow, like how how they do that? It's dude, it's just one extra cut on your proxon. That's it. I then just draw it in. If you're using the dollar store foam core to add in that texture, and I did that with, um, with this one here, uh, it definitely has uh, some detail to it. But the dollar store foam core doesn't take texture as well, and you can't press it down as much as XPS. I might even suggest taking whatever spare pieces of foam. Like you can also, I I, I might layer it because it's so thin. I might layer on some outside uh, elements for trim if I were using dollar store foam core. And I know, I think, John, you did that as well. Like you added some other small bits and pieces, even with the XPS, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like adding uh, little things to your build because, see, uh, I, and, you know, it's not really that. It's not really even, you're not even doing that much more, really, you no. know. No. Like in a build... You always want to play on your textures. Your textures are huge, okay? So, you know, this wagon, I couldn't have left all that out. I could have left all that steel out. We had little things like this, which take no time at all, really help a lot in uh, showing different kind of textures. The more textures you can do, you got steel, you got wood, you got canvas. So there's three textures right there. You know what I mean? That's what makes these builds so cool mm. is adding your different textures to it you know right and i mean i didn't have to but and it's not even that much more you know just like in here the way i did with the uh the trim piece which is this which would go over top of here but if you see here that's what this is that's what that trim is right there all i did was took an exacto cut it out real quick took it and glued it in place right mm. here. That's it. Nice. Done. And so folks uh, that are working with the, the dollar store foam core, if, if that's, you know, if you're if you're a plebe like me, the, the uninitiated unproxoned, um, <laughs> so uh, you may have seen me sanding like a, a mad person just a little while ago. Um, I taken another piece of the dollar store foam core, cut to the size of my door panel, and um, it's really, really hard to get smaller than that three sixteenths of an inch uh, with like a straight knife or something like that. So I've just taken a piece set to the same size and just run it over. I think this is 120 grit sandpaper that I've been running and just planed down the top of the, the sheet to make a, a half thickness sheet because it is really difficult sometimes to get that cut with like a straight razor. Um, so you can mimic some of these things without the tools it just it does take a lot more work a little more time uh, yeah yeah oh you can like i said for years i've used it, you know it, it just takes a little bit more and i don't you know trust me i the proxons are real nice they're they're real nice for someone that's serious but don't think that you can't oh man i don't have a proxon i'm out or you know i'm just stuck doing dungeon tiles that's not true 
that's not true. Don't let that get you down. You can do you can do it all with just a uh, utility knife, just like Daniel Sam. Just I'm like go ahead and get set up here. Oper and Operatus so Maximus approved. Yes, yes. <laughs> I got my game mat too. I'll tell you what. I like uh, this is vinyl. I like this game mat. I like even crafting on it. I just don't want to get paint on it, so I just kind of use this. But yeah, I like I like using this uh, game mat here as a cover on that table. Yeah, it looks. I mean. It, it's a it's a good cover it just looks cool too man what a cool what a cool cover to have i wouldn't use the uh the mouse material that's expensive stuff you know i would also not recommend using your wife's um uh tablecloth that you thought was ordered from amazon but ended up being ordered specially from uh the netherlands <laughs> and ruining that that's 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 my pro tip for all of you guys out there um, solid advice it is definitely solid, solid advice solid advice assume assume that it, everything is ordered from the netherlands and is is fancy <laughs> in the doghouse yeah i i was i was on that one i was on that one Okay, so now we're we're done with our cuts. You kind of know how to glue it, you know, or you can you can use hot glue. You can glue it any way you want. It's not a big deal, really. Yeah. Now I'm going to step back for a second. If you guys just want to, I'll be right back. It's going to be a minute. I want to go get a uh, I want to go get a pen that's upstairs that I like to draw this texture into with. It's cool. I'm like a big fan of it, but go I'll get be it. right back. Go. This is a great opportunity to uh, remind you guys, um, if you are new to the channel and you like the content that you see, uh, be sure to subscribe to the Crazy Crafter channel and make sure you um, turn on the bell notification so you can get notified whenever ever we go live. We are here every Sunday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and... Uh, I keep saying it, I need to stream during the week, and I promise I'm going to start streaming more during the week as well um, on a little bit more frequent basis to, to do some more fun projects. Um, but um, definitely uh, so show your support for the channel. Um, just your subscribing and tuning in with us is huge every, every, every week, and we really appreciate you guys hanging out with us and crafting with us on this fine Sunday, wherever you may be. Um... Look at your support. Look at Dan. I'm just looking at Danny's, uh, Danny's cuts there. That's looking looking good, Danny. It's coming along quite nicely, brother. Oh, why? Thank you, sir. Um. So, um. Take this. Uh, oh no, John, you're back. You're back. I was gonna fill it, but yep. you're you're here. You got now. What pen do you like to texture with there? What What did you grab? I, I just flushed everything out with a ultra fine point. Oh, nice. Yeah, me does. I like these because you can kind of, whenever you're doing your point, you don't have to push hard. Like whenever you're doing like a pencil or anything yep. like that. Yep. With these here, you just lay them on the top and it gives you a real nice black line on here. You don't have, yep. I love these for, for sketching, sketching. P. There's some lines here. So I'm just going to, how this is going to go is... It's going to be vertical. Remember, the grains are running this way in these side pieces, okay? So I'm going to want my pieces to be vertical. So I'm going to put in, I'm going to go ahead and draw in the uh, planks. Once mm. I'm done doing that, this piece here will go over top once I finish texturing. That is going to be the trim. And this is going to be kind of like a, it's going to be kind of like maybe a, brass or copper or i haven't decided yet but it's going to be that's going to be the, the trim because i kind of want this one here to be a more ritzier maybe like a bmw of the wagons <laughs> other than like the like, spared no expense wagon i love it yeah like this guy had some money you know what i mean maybe a traveling uh i don't know maybe a traveling magic shop mage uh you know what i mean this in here is kind of your common man wagon you know he just kind of 
he just got it together. He don't care. As long as he gets him from point A to point B, he's fine. He's okay. So I want to put, yeah, yeah. I want to put a little bit of gold bling in here. This is going to have some bling. So that's Ooh. basically what this piece is going to be on here. That's all. I just want them to look different. When they're side by side, I just wanted them. I don't want them to look the same. I mean, there's nothing know? wrong with, with the bling. No, you got to add some bling, you know. He had a little extra money to spend, you know what I mean? And he he robbed and pillaged for a while and saved and so he's good to go you know he wants to impress the ladies and stuff you know yep so i'm going to go ahead and start out and i'm just basically i'm just going to go ahead and uh go i'm not going to get crazy with you know measuring or nothing i'm not worried about it i'm just going to i do want it to be kind of vertical i don't want it to go way off so i'm just going to go ahead and go with it i'll do a smaller one so i'm just going to sketch in now i'm sketching in the wood panels That's why I like this pen. I like how it. I like you don't using, really have to push down. No, I like you. Is it a sharp? Is it a sharpie? Are you using a it's sharpie? A sharp. Yeah, I'm using the sharpie too. I also, I fell in love with um, this clay sculpting tool this week for wood grain as well. I, I ordered a couple couple new things. Those that wood carving thing and then these clay sculpting tools. The this this one in particular for wood grain is great. I oh, think, they're nice, ain't yeah, they? Yeah, they sure are. I, I, it's it's um, I, I love it. <laughs> I love. I, I, it's really happy with the texture that it's that it's creating on the foam for sure. Yeah, what's nice about it too is is you got different sizes to them 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 balls on the end. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You got different sizes, so. You can switch them out to get, you know, you can't really do that with like a uh, uh, pencil, you know. Right. So you can go in and you can change your uh, the diameter of your lines, the thicknesses. You got, you know, it's called like line weight. Yeah, uh, that's a lot for drawing and stuff. So you can change your line weight in your texturing, you know. So I'm just going to draw. I'm just drawing whatever. I'm just kind of, I'm not really giving this a whole lot of thought. I'm just vertical lining it. <laughs> Good. Right there. This one's gonna be tight in there. All right, let's see. Oh, I was saying I was gonna do my uh, tutorial on hot glue uh, earlier on how to hot glue this. Uh, make sure you place the piece ahead of time and mar mark it so you know exactly where it needs to go. And then don't burn yourself like I've done about three times already uh, on this build. So pro tips, pro, pro tips, tips. We'll pro the tips, show. right there, right. Don't yeah. burn yourself. I mean, that's truly. I I keep going back and forth and weighing. Um, I know a a lot of a lot of uh, guests that have come on the show and then uh, out in our community swear by like PVA or wood glue and taking the time with the foam because it has that flexibility to be adjusted when it's drawing. So when it's if it if it's not in the right spot it's not the end of the world. You can make those adjustments. And then at the end of the day, when you Mod Podge and seal and get all the, those, um, uh, get it get it sealed up, it's not a big deal. But so far, so good. Not too shabby. Just a couple of areas where I can, uh, I, I tested my, my, the sensitivity in my fingertips. <laughs> still there, still working. <laughs> mm. Oh, I burnt my hand sometimes so bad on hot glue, just... Mm -hmm. <laughs> easy to do easy i like it when it to sticks do. to your hand that's oh, the best there you know you really got it going on when it's stopped. you know you've made a really bad mistake if it's sticking to your hand yep yep oh my god it's so painful all right take these now i could have done the inside of here i didn't if i was going to do that uh i would the best way really and honestly the best way to texture, depending on what you're texturing, but a really good way to do it is to texture your pieces when they're not assembled. Yeah. Yeah. Texture them when they're in this. It's easier. It's so much easier. But yeah. this wagon's not really a complicated, and all your lines are vertical. But if you're doing bricks or blocks and all your pieces are running, say this is a wall and these are blocks, and you're going to have a wall running this way like that 
it's better to go ahead unless you want to measure all that it's better just go ahead and just glue it all together and then do it because you can run all your lines so they match up you know what i mean mm -hmm. but like like this here i could have easily just did all this apart and then it would be textured ready to go glue, glue it together then just mod podge it and be done you know but if you want your your points to all line up and to do it the easy way it depends if you're doing like a building you can do it glued together that way it's so easy just to run your lines across everything's already for you to mark you know you do one wall then run off the other wall mm -hmm. and so you know what i mean okay now what i'm going to do i'm going to show you a, a uh this is an old sculptor's trick i used to do a lot of sculpting and uh whenever you're sculpting you want to uh do it in low light and you want to throw hard shadows it helps with this foam here because this foam is like it like really kind of sometimes i beat my eyes up over the years so bad it's not even funny mm. my eyes ain't nowhere near that my i used to have real good eyes like i took a test one time at uh, walmart they did some kind of test on how far out things stick and, and it, it was just the slides with numbers it was like one two three four five six she would say which one's sticking up and mm -hmm. the first one would be real obvious then the second one i got cleared down to like six and she said i ain't ever seen anyone get past four <laughs> she said i've never seen that before she said i've never i've never seen one get past four you did them all you know what i mean but now my eyes are trash so oh, no i gotta do it a little bit different here because i've just i just done done this stuff to where my eyes are just they're just tired now you yep. know yep. anyhow so what we're gonna do is set this up and I want to try with this light here. What you're, what you're going to want to do, and I haven't, we should have tested this, but that's okay. What I'm going to try to do, I, I might not be able to do it, but whenever I do texturing, I kind of shut everything down. Now, let me see if, See how you can start seeing the texturing a little bit better. I'm gonna have to move to my other light though, because this one's just a little bit too aggressive. Yeah. This is like a spotlight. Yeah, it's a special. You got a special on that wagon. That looks good. <laughs> oh, I see. I see. That's better. Hitting it, turning it like that works better, John. We can see it. Can you see that? Yeah. So now what I'm going to do, this allows me to see my texture. I can see it really good, like. From where i am i don't know how that really looks but uh what you're going to do now is i'm going to get my tools out and what that's going to allow you to do is that's going to let you see everything that you're doing because sometimes when you got light coming straight down on it it diffuses everything and you don't have shadows to play off of you know what i mean you want your shadows that way you can tell how you're cutting or how deep you're cutting you know what i mean mm -hmm. all right so in the in the in the theater lighting class that I'm currently teaching um, uh, for my high school students, we just went over. Uh, this is one of the functions of stage lighting: is that uh, what you're describing is is modeling. It's it's revealing form with the light. And, yeah. Um, yep. And we in the theater we love shadows. Um, exactly. I love, love love shadows, and um, and so. Uh, yeah, if you if you ever put yourself in a position where you can really um, get a dynamic single source of light, then you can rotate your object in that light. You can see how deep the cavities are, the recesses, and um, super duper important. And then over here in chat, um, uh, uh, Tina, sorry uh, that Amy is not here to back you up on the glitter alert um, <laughs> when, when the conversation of bling came up. And, and Night Terrain is asking, I'm using an X-Acto knife to cut out my wheels. For those without a hot wire tool, how are you cutting circles? Uh, Chris uh, suggests um, uh, suggests scissors, possibly. Uh, and then, um, and Tina, I think, is, is actually going to get to the advice that I was going to give. She says, cut little straight lines along the edge. The rest of you, uh, the rest you can do with sandpaper, and and uh, yeah. Tina is one hundred percent right. Don't think about um, so much making a circle. You can one hundred percent do that, but um, I really like long straight blades that the the breakaway blades, and I haven't gotten to this point yet. But 
if you let me find a scrap piece of foam. Did I just I just tossed all of my scrap pieces of foam out of the way because I'm a fool. Um, if you think about the circle as opposed to being a circle, but more like a billion sided um, billion sided polygon, right? Um, what you can do is just start lopping off edges that are uh, tangent to that. And so I just touch the blade to the, the edge and just cut off lines that are uh, tangent. So just like touching at one point on the circle. And then eventually I shave off so many little points that it becomes almost indistinguishable from a circle. Um, and uh, that will get the job done. Now I've only cut maybe, maybe like eight cuts. Ooh, gotta find the circle. But I'm very close to circle at this point. Um, and if I need to make it more defined, I can always cut off more of those little tang uh, tangential lines, but I can uh, take it to the sandpaper like, um, like Tina suggests, and just knock those things off really quick. And um, yeah, so cutting cutting circles is super duper hard, but uh, you can 100% do it with straight lines because that's a mm. pretty darn close to circle um, with almost no effort. So um, yeah, just just tangents. And that was my tangent on tangents. <laughs> go yeah i think uh same same for me like just i whatever whatever uh, the approximately i found the the um what is it the uh let me do something here boom bring that away boom bring that back um the um the th the thing uh, that I use is whatever whatever was diameter based yeah for one inch diameter and then I totally use just this little the little razor and cut out around and for me I like if it's not I don't know it's it's the, it's a wooden wheel right so it's not gonna it's gonna have some imperfections and I feel like you can also when you're going back back around I use the wood uh, the wood uh, to texture when I'm texturing the wood in. When I'm layering that in, I don't know if you guys saw me earlier. I was doing it just uh, if I see like an if something's out of shape, I will just press it and kind of form it back into the circle a little bit. And I use that with the tool. But you could use a pencil to do that too. So there's my there's my two cents on the wheel. That's what I used for mine. Boo boo boo. You can buy uh, wagon wheels and stuff too. I think if you look on eBay, maybe you might be able to get a uh, bag of pre-made wagon wheels that are the spokes. Uh, I don't know how much they are, but you could do that even. Yeah, yeah, that would be great too. Like it's, it, there's, you know, <laughs> what was it? <laughs> Whatever, what did you tell me yesterday, Michael? Whatever you need the tool to do. <laughs> or whatever, whatever you yeah. you need to like do uh, execute the technique. It'll like that's what you can use, and that's what you should use. <laughs> like it'll work. It'll work. Exactly. I mean, it could be a hammer hammer for all I care. If it yeah. does a job, it does a job. Yep. Yep. True. It's like what's the? It's there's a phrase like everything when you only have a hammer, everything becomes a nail or something along those lines, <laughs> right? Like uh, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, and, and what is it like adversity is the mother of invention or something mm -hmm. like it, if you've got a single razor blade and and foam, you can do this craft like you can do oh, any, yeah. almost any of these crafts. If you just take the time to sort of look at it and, and say like, OK, but I only have a razor blade. How would I do this? You know, yeah. and, and frankly, I know everybody's like an exacto lover, and I, I have this the standard like what is it number eleven in right in front of me, mm -hmm. but the 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 single long breakaway blade outside of its case, just as a flat razor blade, is almost always my go to for everything. Nice. Um, it's it just it's so versatile and does so many things. I got a point. I've got a nice long sharp thing. I I love that thing. So. Um. 
single single razor blade and a pile of foam and you know, your glue of choice. You can you can you can do a lot. Yep. yep. And, and I'll tell you what, a wire brush too is nice. I used I oh, used mm. the uh, uh, exacto blade, uh, and I've used just regular utility blade. You can get them on Amazon. You can get a box of those utility blades that are breakaway for so cheap, man. You know what I mean? You can cut and cut and cut, and you can do just about everything. And then the wire brushes too are nice to have to to make more organic shapes. You know. Hmm. And also a good tip, if you're doing detail, I go through exacto blades like crazy. This is a number 11. Whenever I'm I'm cutting, you don't have to use exacto blade. You can actually, you could just use whatever you want. You could use these tips here, whatever size tip you want. You could run that down. You know what I mean? The reason I like exacto blades is because in any piece, any any object, you're going to have what's called hard lines and soft lines. And your sharp lines really make a big deal, a difference when uh, dry brushing, believe it or not. Like all my blocks, if I'm doing single blocks, I, uh, I bevel the corners. The reason why is because I want hard lines. Hard lines will define a surface. Uh, the soft lines are good too, which is this here is, could be a soft line. You know what I mean? Compared to this line, you can see how, how it really sticks out. Your shadows will play a big piece in, in whatever piece that you have. Your shadows will do a lot of work for you that you don't need to do. You know what I mean? But that's why I'm a big fan of beveling. I like to bevel a lot, and I mm. like to use exactos. But make sure it's sharp. As soon as, soon as you start to feel that exacto start to drag and pull and rip, stop. If you want a perfectly straight, sharp line, if you're not worried about it, then don't worry about it. You know what I mean? Rip them pieces out. If it's like stone or whatever, it don't matter. You know what I mean? Then you don't have to worry. But if you're wanting to get, if you're wanting to get real sharp lines and real crisp lines in your piece, yeah, as soon as, as soon as you feel it starting to drag, you're done with it. Get rid of it. A lot of people will hold on to an exacto blade for too long, and you can tell because their foam is shredded. You know what I mean? Because I mean the stuff they're they're not cheap, you know. Exacto blades ain't cheap, you know, but I uh, you know, if you're gonna do something, you know, try to and you want those sharp edges, do it. And it's not that it's ruined. I have a container that's full of exacto blades that are still sharp. I use for other cutting that don't need to be razor razor sharp, you know what I mean? So and and so it's not that bad. You, you're still going to get a lot, but keep your exactos real sharp if that's what you want. You know, if you're looking for sharp, sharp lines, you know, that's why I like to use it. So here you can already see in this, in this right here that we're looking at now, you can see how the shadows are doing the work for me. With this light bouncing off the side of here, it's showing me everything. If this light was down on top, it would, Totally, I, I I could still see it, but I wouldn't see it at this level. This level here, I can really see all the hard lines, the soft lines. I can see it better than what you can in, in the camera. I can see how deep each piece is. You know what I mean? This this is key. Whenever you're doing your texture, because I can come in and I could I could literally take the smallest. Uh, let me see here. I could draw in just the smallest. Here we go. Say this was stone. It's kind of hard to um, see. I can see it, but it's like it's different on this camera. Hey, I'm just going to go ahead and do it here. I can come in and draw the smallest cracks. Now, I'm, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm drawing just how I want it, you know. But see, you can come in and you can see exactly how you're cutting. I could go even even smaller than that. Even I could come in, which no real need to. But but see, and you can see all that. But if you would take that light, and if I would put a light right down on here, it would diffuse everything, and you'd have one heck of a time. You could, I mean, I've I've done it, you know. But it just for my aging eyes, it helps doing it like that, you know. But so now I got my panels, my planks, shadows are doing the work for me. Now it's time to add the uh, texture to it. Basically just texture away. You know what I mean? I 
concentrating. <laughs> yeah, no joke. Was like, what? No joke, my friend. I'm uh I'm 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 bouncing around here. I'm going back and forth between the one that we're working on today, and then I'm I'm starting to look at my canvas uh, for the top side, and I'll talk more about that when John when we get to talking about uh, the top side of the canvas. But I'm gonna lay yep. this down on here to kind of prep. If I'm gonna try this before the end of the stream, I gotta I gotta I gotta I gotta get I gotta get it on there now. How are we looking on, Tom? We're good. We're doing okay. I mean, I'm. Uh, what are we? We're at 22, so we're you know we're we're uh, we're 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 looking pretty good. We probably got about. I would say, knowing us and what we tend to do, <laughs> we we have about a little under an hour, I think. Okay. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of real quick. I'm just going to bang this out. And uh, basically, we went over the tools that we need for texture and kind of how to do your check your hard lines and stuff. But with your with this kind of lighting is really nice. I mean, it really is. You can get in there and you can start sculpting and just you can see so much. It's crazy. And like I said, my eyes are getting old. They need help. <laughs> <laughs> Thing. And then we'll start on the canvas stuff for for for. Uh... For the younger crafting generation to look forward to. My eyes aren't oh. working anymore. Oh, I tell you, I tore my eyes up, man. I'm, I'm seriously. I just, I did. I just beat them up so bad. <laughs> well, sacrifices. Yeah, must if be you guys made. keep doing that, you'll have, you'll have that too. You'll, you'll have that to look forward to. I mean, I already have. I'm, I'm, I'm technically legally blind, uh, based on like my prescription. Like uh, the government gives me aid to <laughs> for my like I don't have to pay for my corrective lenses because I'm so my my eyesight is so bad without corrective lenses. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, see, I see, I can't see far away, but I'm getting to the point now where I used to have real good up close vision. I could take my face, and if I'm painting a mini, I could have that my eye like right on top of it, and I could like zoom in, like it was crazy. You know what oh, I mean? Wow. Like, but I mean, not zoom in in a sense like a camera, but like my eyes would focus. Is what no, I'm no, going to say. you just revealed focus. you're a superhuman. You're you just revealed no, that you, you're a superhuman. You know, <laughs> no, you know what I'm saying? It would like focus. Well, now. If, if 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 I hold that mini too close, it blurs immediately. Mm. If, if if this here is about my perfect vision, right about there, if I go in any closer, it goes. Boom. It used to never be like that. That kind of that sucks, but that's just the way it is, I guess. So anyhow, here's the, the one. Do -do 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 -do. And so that's done. Okay. So now I'm going to glue this trim on top of here, okay? I'm just gonna slap it on. We're gonna turn the lights on. We're gonna start kicking it in higher gear now. Oh okay? yeah. Try to kind of kind of get it moving. So I'm gonna grab some glue here. I'm gonna glue that on and then we'll go back to texturing the, uh, the trim, which is gonna be kind of like a metal trim. So let me go ahead and put that here. Make sure I'm doing the right side. Yep, I've done that before. I'm just sticking some little windows on the side of mine, so little door window doors. Yeah. Did you um? Did you put like the? Did you do any of the like the metal accents and trim that uh, John's done on his Michael for for today? Uh, not yet. Not yet. I would like to. Yeah. Yeah. I want to get the, the main part of the build done and then. Mm-hmm. A, a little hint on, on like your accents and stuff is cut your pieces ahead of time whenever you're cutting off your materials cut list. Mm. Uh, if you if you say okay, well I like that. I want to have a nice accent piece on the front piece. Cut an extra piece. All you're going to need to do is cut one, and then all you got to do is slice that piece. That way it's form fit perfectly to whatever piece you're doing. Like here, 
you can see that this came off of a piece that was like that. So all I got to do is I just draw it out. It didn't take me no time at all. I just kind of went in and sketched around, did my thing, and then just set it here and you got a perfect fit. There you go. That That's is your super trim. cool looking. That is fantastic. Yeah, looking. that trim is that is definitely looking like the BMW or Mercedes of, <laughs> of medieval <laughs> wagons. That's for sure. That's looking good, brother. Yeah. Yeah, he, he mm -hmm. robbed a lot of people. I want to say these are this, <laughs> he robbed this guy a lot ain't of no people. good. He's a thief. You know what I mean? He's a thief. He's he ain't no good. This guy, he he got his trimmed the dirty way. He's the dirty dirty, you know. <laughs> but anyhow, so there there that is. That's but see what's nice is it's it's custom fit. But but if you want a piece, definitely make a couple extra pieces so you can cut your trim ahead of time, you know. It just makes it a whole lot easier because if not, you got to go back. Then you're going to have to measure, dude. It's trust me, it's just way easier to just do it when you're cutting your materials list. Then I'm just I got to get get this glue off of here. Yeah, we'll, go back and we'll texture this this uh, this trim here. I was thinking of doing two tone. I'm thinking of doing like a gold, nice, and a silver, or maybe a. I don't know. I, I do want to make it two tone. I do know that. I'm definitely going to make it two tone. Okay, put that down there. All right. I am ready to mod podge. I'm going to mod podge. Um. Hmm. What am I going to do with that? I don't know what I'm going to do with that. Uh. Am I ready to mod podge? Am I ready to mod podge? I had a thought, an idea. So I'm also going to try to make that top side play, or the I'm going to try to make the second one today, Damien. Or not Damien. Damien just joined from the Cave of Craft, and that's what I'm thinking about. John, uh, I'm going to try to make this one playable uh, on the inside so I can put hashtag candy treats inside. Oh, hell yeah. That's it, too. Now on here, I'm just going to take this ball... I'm going to press that ball, and what's that going to do? That's going to give it kind of a look like it was hand-forged and it was beat by hand. Uh, I'm just going to do this kind of real quick. But I'm just coming in. I'm just going to press. Now, that's going to give it kind of a uh, hand-forged. Do all your corners, your edges. Just kind of play with it. That's going to give it kind of like a uh, – as if it was hammer-forged out. There. Something like that. down in here and you can even draw in here this if i remember right yeah the other side was uh i put a triangle in here you can't see it but when you paint it and 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 wash it you'll be able to see it but there's triangle and there's some parts that i uh let me see it's blurring out but when i did i just kind of added a little bit of design you know, so that's just all you all you can do. You can make this wood. You could cover. You could do this. Make this look like grains. Yeah, wood grains. You know what I mean. That'd I'm just be going cool to do too. This steel. Yeah, whatever. Pick your poison. <laughs> or you don't even you don't even need to have trim. Or you could just do your trim. That's the nice thing is there's just so many ways to do something. You don't even need this trim. You know what I mean. You can just do it with your. You could just sculpt it in there. Right. Nothing wrong with that, you know. I'm curious when you guys are out there in the uh, uh, that are that are on the stream with us today or in the recording. Uh, what would you would you add trim? Would you bling it out or would you make your common man one? Uh, what would you what would you what path would you choose? The path of trim or the path of no trim? Mm -hmm. Would you choose Corinthian mm -hmm. leather? Cor Corinthian leather or would you choose? Uh, Cloth upholstery. Both are awesome. Yeah, but these here, these are awesome. If you can get them, these are great for texturing. And they're cheap. They're real cheap. Yeah. 
All right, so now we're going to move on to the canvas. Yeah, the canvas. This is a big one. And, uh, let's see here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these pieces. I'm going to put these in here, and I'm going to pin them. Yeah. Some reason, I made a wrong cut. Or mm. no, you know what it is? It's this piece here. It's sitting us down low. I don't know if I like that. I think I might just pull it up a little bit and pin it. Maybe flush with this. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. Let's just kind of, I'm not going to get good enough right here. Normally I'd measure it and stuff. I'm kind of screwed up like that, but I'm not worried about it. I'm just going to eyeball it. That looks good. So that's screwed up. That's smart. Thing. There we go. Sometimes I make things longer than they should. And then I get wore out. Now I need this. Uh, I'm not going to do this here. I'm going to. I'm going to, when I pin this, I'm going to pin this up in and keep this down low. If I don't do that, it's going to get in the way. So I'm going to pin that. I'm going to pin this. There we go. And do two more pins and we're done. And I'm going to use tissue paper for this here. Uh, whenever you do this, you're going to want to cover your piece because I'm actually going to lay this right on top of here. But it has to be, I got to protect my piece. So I'm going to put shrink wrap on here and I'll show you how this is done. Make sure that's in, is that good? Yeah, now push down, that's good. Okay, that'll stay. So let me go grab this shrink wrap. I'm done with this light. I don't need it like that no more. And we'll get the we'll get to doing this canvas here real quick. Nice. Okay, I'll be right back. Let me go grab some saran wrap and I'm gonna get this bowl that I use. Trying to make some trim on mine. Oh nice. Don't know if you can see that Let's at the see bottom. It. Oh, that looks great. I think that looks there. fantastic. Pretty snazzy, pretty snazzy. Daniel, how's it coming along there? Are you trimming yeah, it up? I'm, I, I'm working on it. I, my, my camera's really blown out today. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong, but mm. I've I'm, I'm, I'm just put these little... Uh, I'm, I'm working on getting these little V pieces down on the side, and uh, I'm going to put that sort of hammered texture that uh john was showing off and um now that we're taking just a little bit of break to get some some saran wrap in our lives which i may have to run off and do shortly uh <laughs> i just want to welcome a couple of new people that have shown up all right and, and then also uh night terrain is saying i'm going to try to make an open side on my first wagon oh nice uh, for more of a market or merchant wagon and i think that that is brilliant um, great idea. Do it. Yeah, so that's a good idea. It's awesome. a great idea. You're gonna have to. Um, you'll have to share that um, with us uh, once. Once you. Once you finish that up, um, we'd love to check it out and see it. You can either email it to to us at the Crazy Crafter. Um, soon you will be able to just post it on a Facebook page. I'm. I need to get that up and running too, for so we can just share our work a lot easier. Um, with uh, with a group on there because I'd love to see everyone's builds all the time because I know y'all are I know y'all are crafting out there so yeah now I, and I, this this might be one of those projects that that becomes like a like a little bug in my brain uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm envisioning uh, gypsy caravans yes and and other wonderful things like that I who was I it someone was saying like. Live. A war, like a war one, a war wagon would be cool. Yeah, that's what I'm doing next. I'm going to do a war wagon. You do a war wagon? Maybe it was you, John. I think it was you. You were talking about like a war wagon. I was like, ooh, that'd be cool. Hang some weapons off of it, some spikes. Um, so in the in the campaign that I've been running, uh, uh, they they've just left a city that was like the the hub of magic in this this world. And they've been—they've had a chauffeur named Skip, yeah, the entire time, 
and have gotten taken around the, the town in these these lovely magic wagons and uh only then like near the end of their time in there do they find out that skip was a simulacrum and there were like five or six versions of him oh uh, which is why he's always uh, right around them when they whenever they need him uh and so now i i'm like i need to make a mercedes i need to make skip's wagon <laughs> that'll be fun has to happen. What is a simulacrum, Danny? That's a, a new one. A simulacrum. Uh, simulacrum. It, it's a spell. It's seventh or eighth level, I think, in in five e. Okay. It, uh, uh, I, you know, it's very much uh, just a, a a sort of ice clone of okay. something. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um. Yeah. There's so many weird and cool spells that 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 games just don't get to use because. Uh, because who makes it that long? You know what I mean? <laughs> who, plays it, who plays it 18th level? Or 17th level? Uh, we're trying. I don't know if we're going to get there. We'll, we're, we're certainly trying to, to get there. We have, we have like... It's worth, six, it. huh? it's worth doing for like a one shot and just making some crazy characters and just doing for one shot. But yeah. it all gets a bit broken up there. It's true. It, it's true. Um... Make the change to ICRPG, darn it, says, says Sonder. Um, and is that your system? Is that the system that you've been working on, uh, Sonder? It uh, is. Provide, provide those links. <laughs> I mean, I like the system, but the idea of not rolling with D20s and D10s and stuff like that to me is, yeah, I love, I love those dice. I, love that. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't. Like for me, just rolling with these sixes. Yeah, if it if it if it takes away my dice my dices, I'm I'm also I share I share your same sentiments there, my friend. I'm like, oh, I want to roll my dice. You get you get pretty attached to those. I sure do. Those little the math rocks. The math rocks are are funny how they cling to you. Or they. But having said that, I um I think we should um definitely have a go at Sanders game some whenever he's feeling a bit better we should I, get a group to get group I together I would love to that sounds amazing get him to run a game for oh, us or something yes please yes please let's see I want to throw this in real quick yeah uh, they got these uh at Shifting Lands with Gerard Boom oh yeah these are awesome <laughs> these are little window inserts and they will insert into whatever you're doing. These things are so cool. You're so excited. You were showing I me do. these before the stream them. The stream today. You got some new toys from, from Shifting Lands, which is super, super cool. Yeah. Oh, and I love them. Gerard, but these, these things Gerard give you such a nice... Yeah, they just give you such a nice touch. You know what I mean? That you yeah. wouldn't have. You just trace it out, and you just put it in and they're not expensive at all i mean they're there's nothing to them yeah. you know they add a but, lot to that piece just that little piece that you're working on there they add a lot to it um they do it's, it's really nice cool. little accents to it you know what i mean and and also it comes with what's like a stained glass and here's a uh example of the stained glass you can lay this over top of this and that would give you your stained glass you just glue it onto your frame mm -hmm. now you can light it up from the back and it'll glow it'll look really good with some leds or something mm -hmm. but these are worth it i tell you they really are they're they're worth it just to if you're making scatter like this is i wasn't even planning on making this you know but if you're just doing scatter or whatever just grab one slam it in there good you know what i mean you're yeah. Yeah, Gerard Boom from Shifting Lands is a great. Uh, he's he's been on the the stream a couple of different times. He's a great supporter of the channel. Yeah. If you haven't been over to Shifting Lands, and it's not just procs on accessories, which I think no. that many people get confused because he's he's so he's really revolutionized how you get um, more utility out of that procs on. Right. But his accessories for for modifying your crafts are pretty amazing. Uh, if you haven't checked out that his store. Uh, go to shiftinglens.com. It's really, really good stuff. 
he's he's always hesitant to just uh plug it. turn the stream into like a, a, a plug or like a commercial for himself <laughs> but he's not here right now so we can do it we can do it we can do uh, it for him check out shiftinglens.com his 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 accessories uh, like these windows in particular uh they are nice they're 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 great and and they're things again that you could build by hand none yep. of us are, you know if you if you got real meticulous you could make that by hand but <laughs> wouldn't it be more fun to just plug it in and 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 keep crafting right so um yeah uh check out his stuff it's 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 great it's really really great check out his youtube channel too his YouTube channel is really good too. It's got a lot of really good information on like quick craft tutorials and he's planning on adding more this year. I know he wants to expand what the content that he has on there, but you should check out his YouTube channel because he's got some really good um, quick tutorials on, on some on Proxon, uh, Proxon usage and just, you know, uh, more inspiration for the craft, which, you know, all of us can always get excited about. It's great. Mm -hmm. Yep. And just like Danny said, you know what I mean? You could cut them out by hand. My goodness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, you can. Uh, I would rather <laughs> just pay the money and slap <laughs> them in and be done and move on to another bill <laughs> or spend more time on my dry brushing or detail a little bit more. You know what I mean? So, yeah. but I mean, it's up to you. I mean, hey, some people say, well, I don't want nothing bought. I want to build everything. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong. <laughs> yeah, more power to you. Yeah, power to you. Yeah. Power that to kind you. of used to be me, but I'm definitely going the other way now. <laughs> he's he's had the taste of sweet sweet proxon. It's I mean, just anything as well. I used to make my own um, grass uh, flocking. Yeah. And yeah, you can totally make it, and there's great ways you can make it. Um, but you know, if you've got a few pounds. You can buy a bag of grass blocking that can last for a long time. Mm hmm. And yeah, and it's like kind of like you don't have to mess with it. You're done. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm layering this is tissue paper, just regular standard tissue paper. The reason I like tissue paper is because it don't have a design on it. Uh, sometimes if you get like quilted, things like that, uh, they're, they're, they're actually like sewed almost. Sometimes that'll show through. I don't know. Uh, sometimes it don't. But just get this tissue paper. And all you're wanting to do is come in here and add a couple layers. You don't. You want, you want to add a couple layers because you don't want this to start ripping on you. Okay. So I'm going to add, I think, three layers. I'm going to check it out here. So that looks good. Now I'm just going to lay a piece right over top of that. I'm not. And I'm going to see if that soaks through. We'll find out. I'll just use my fingers here. So I got three layers of tissue paper on here. I'm going to try to get this to soak through. This will be the bottom side. We'll see what happens. I might just have to put some glue on here. You kind of want it to be pliable, you know. You really do. But you don't want it to be so thin that it's going to start ripping on you. Once it starts to rip, it's no big deal. If you get a little rip, you can hide it. Like, see, there's a wee little rip right there. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to kind of tap it in. And that's okay. And keep on going. I'm going to add a little bit of glue to this. That's good. Pardon a little bit of fan noise here. Colin's biggest fan. What? I said Colin's biggest fan. Oh. Ah, 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 <laughs> ah, I was like, oh. I have a biggest oh oh i see what you did there there was a slow slow he burn for me <laughs> colin he did a funny yeah he did well i mean that's stretching 
So while you're working on that on that little piece there, uh, John, and talking to a little bit about how you're texturing the canvas for, for yours, um, I took some cheesecloth um, yep. and I yep. just flung my one bit of cheesecloth off that I'm going to do for the second one. But here you can see it. I put it on the first one and – I, uh, I'll, I'll throw it up here for, for you to see John up on the zoom real quick. You can see, see okay, this. Let me take a look. in fact, I'm going to do this. I am going to switch it back yeah. here. I'll throw it back up here for, for you guys too. Um, boop. and then let me come down to mine. Boop. I'm going to transition it back over. You guys can check this out, but I use cheesecloth and I label or I, I, I glued it on top here and then I just took some Agrax Earthshade. You can use any wash, oh, though. Yeah. And then I threw it on top. And now th this is pretty dry. But if you can see the middle, like, uh, support that I put in there, it really took uh, down and uh, just with the dampening of of the uh, of the cloth, it's got this nice shape. It's got, like, a little bit more of a raggedy look to it, which I really like. And uh, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna dry brush that right now, and I think that once once I do that, it's really gonna pop. So that'll be fun. Mm -hmm. That looks good. It kind of has like a goblin or like a Ravenloft feel. You yep. know what I mean? Or maybe yep. you know, it, I like it. I think that's really cool. Thanks, I like man. It. I I, I uh, I'm 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 excited with it. I I think. I think um, you know it's the first time I've done it, so I'm I I, I cut this one too short. And it's a little too, um, a little too. Uh, I wish it was just a little bit longer. Then the one for the second piece is, is going to be longer, so I might be able to make that one look a little a little nicer. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Okay. So now <laughs> I want mine to be removable. Okay. So. Uh, you know, it can pop off. The way you do that is basically you're going to do it exactly the same if you wanted it to stay on. I just, I like to be able to just pull it off, but it don't matter. Uh, just take take shrink wrap, saran wrap, anything, and just protect your model. Just lay it over top, and that's it. Then you're going to lay your piece over top of here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut this down to be a little more manageable. I don't want to, I don't want to get too, I don't want it to be too big and unwieldy. So I'm just going to go ahead and come in here, do a little bit of chops, a little bit of stabs, see what happens here. If I can get it separated, I'm hoping I can get a decent separation because see, you're going to have to trim this again anyhow. So instead of like having a bunch of stuff hanging over, uh, pulling on it just kind of we'll see that's what I did last time it's kind of pain in the butt I'm just going to try it like this and see what happens there we go Then once I get this shape, I'm just going to take it and I'm going to throw it on top. And then the fun part is we're going to manipulate it. So hmm. there's that. Where? And then what we'll do, we'll just kind of manipulate it, you know what I mean? And and see, because you kind of want your cloth to hang naturally as best that you can. And I know it's not sometimes it's not easy, but now I'm going to go ahead and grab this cloth here somehow. There it is. Ugh. I'm just going to lay it. I'm just going to drape it. Bradley West is suggesting nonstick foil would be a good uh, would be good for that. Might be strong enough to bypass the internal supports for the glue up. Oh, interesting. Good. Yep. Try it out. Try it out, Try Bradley. It. That sounds yep. amazing. Yes, no. Let us know what happens. Yeah, let us know what happens. That's just it. Keep yeah, us yeah. posted. That's the fun part. That's the fun part. Experiment. It is the know? fun part. 
Now, now here it's it's off a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick the whole thing up, set this down, and then I'm gonna reposition. I kind of want this to set center because whenever you're doing this, you you want it to uh, you kind of want it to sit naturally. And I don't know. That's just me. I'm just kind of goofy like that. I'm just gonna try to. There we go. Now see how it's kind of the same weight on both sides. Mm -hmm. I've got much better ooh, i got a much better uh feel to it the way it's going to sit there we go there we go okay so there's that now what we're going to do is we're going to sculpt we're going to kind of sculpt it we're going to use pants to do cinch off points stuff like that oh uh, Let's see here. Way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go back again, shut down, shut everything off, turn this light to the side. Now I can really see how that tarp looks. I diffused, you know, you know, I don't have nothing, no light diffusing anything, and I'm going to move this forward. Now I'm just going to start pushing. I'm going to poke and prod and f try to find different pieces so here's the lip right there there's one of the supports now i might have to keep adding water to this you kind of want to you don't want to add too much but you got to keep it from really sticking also these edges here you want to kind of show your edges so i'm going to kind of there's the edge. So as I push in, I'm kind of just, it's just kind of a process. It's like, it takes a little bit, but you'll start to see, you'll start to see everything. See, there's the edge right there. You're going to want to find lines because the way that that's going to sit on there, it's going to, you, you want it to really look like it's setting on top of your piece mm. and not just kind of like throw it on there. You, you know what I'm saying? If that makes any sense. Yep. You want it to look as natural as you can. So you're, I'm pretty much just going to kind of sculpt it really. Just keep adding water to your brush. Okay. Now that'll, that way it don't become an absolute sticky mess on you because it will. There, see, see how that edge, you can see the edge right there, right there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a, what's this side look like? See, I'm going to stick a pin in here. Put a I'm pin in pin, it. I'm going to pin it. What that's going to do, it's kind of cool. It's going to look like a tie off. Let's see if I can't do this here. So I'm going to push this all the way back. Yeah. There. I see that's the, uh, there. Yeah. Right there. We'll pin that sucker. There. Now that's going to look like a tie off point. Whenever we cut this, we'll cut it this way. Yeah. We'll trim around here, trim around here. That's going to look like it's cinched off. Okay, so that's kind of like it's kind of cool because all you're doing is pinning it. But you could take two rope, you could get a little little rope and tie on there, and that'll look like look like it's just a point where they grabbed it and they they pulled that canvas tight. Oh, and nice! It's like a cinch off area. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna do the same back here. I'm gonna push and prod and poke until I get what I want here, which is gonna be right about there. And two, you're going to get air bubbles. Now, see here, I don't know if you see it, but you can see my lip. There's the lip right there. That's what you want. That's what you want right there. So now you're just basically going to sculpt. You're going to force that canvas to lay as naturally as you can. You're going to make it, you know. Right. Or you can just throw it on. I, You know, it don't matter. But that's the kind of way I like to do it. And you really get like a really nice look, you know. Well, this it's is really the this is the Mercedes Benz or the BMW version, so 
This is. Yeah. It's got to. It's got to come correct. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's got to come correct. That's right. That's right. It's got to come correct here. So I'm just going to kind of stick this in there and then there. Oh, there. Yeah. So let's see if I can't <laughs> plate that up for you. I randomly, it popped into my brain as I was typing up the description last night. John, uh, you have one of your paints is called Territorial Beige. Yeah, yeah. And I was cracking up at that because I was just like, <laughs> like coming up with the names of paints. <laughs> and like, this is Territorial Beige. So like, if another beige comes next to it, it's like, it gets all like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Well, what, what are you doing? This is what my are you surface doing? Yep. area. And then, that's and, right. and then it got me thinking about, I was like, oh, that's like a whole brand of, of crafter paints that, that I don't even know folk art and apple barrel. I'm sure they realize that everyone's crafting with their stuff, but like you could have like, um, you know, uh, I don't know, war wagon Brown or something like that. Like, how do you name it? Name yeah. it for like the, the craft. I thought that'd be like, have your own special brand of craft paint. So, um, yeah, oh, yeah. I, I, awesome. I thought that'd be fun to like throw out to you guys. Like what would your, what would your color paint, uh, name, name, uh, if you came up with one, what would it be? Same for you all out there. What would, what paint should, uh, should they name, right? What would you name it out there? Mine was War Wagon Brown. War Wagon Brown. <coughs> uh, that's what happens when you add the description in at like, you know, 1130 at night. Uh, you start thinking of these silly things. <laughs> there you go. Just up. like, uh, well, um, I'll sit it down with them. They paint. They got all their wild names, you know, and, and I like Army Painter myself and Army Painter. They got they got all those Warlock purple. And, yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? They kind of rock out like that. They got that rock and roll going on. Let's do straight over. There we go. So now, see, I'm kind of pinning this around these edges here, and you're going to start to see... There, you're gonna to start to see the shape of the actual wagon, and all of this is going to get oh, yeah. cut. But it's important to you got to be able to see that because to know where you got to cut. If not, it's it's not going to work out. Right. This looks a lot better. I'm just looking at it on camera, and it looks crazy. It looks a lot better, like with me looking at it. It's it's just getting washed out <laughs> real bad. Sure. But yeah, I mean, doing it like this, it's it looks good. I mean, you can really see every single detail. But like in here, now what I'm going to do is just push this in, and that's going to give me that defined line. Now, I know exactly where the edge of that wagon is. I know right where the lip is. Uh, I know where your supports are. I can actually – let me try to come over here and just kind of give it a brush. I want to – what I'm going to do is I'm going to show off some of them supports. Yeah, so I'm come show in them here. off. Yeah, I'm gonna get it wet and just kind of streak this thing down and see what happens here. Now you uh, want your pieces to kind of, like I said, you want them to lay naturally, so you got to kind of watch and just kind of like, see, I got this. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I like that. That's kind of funky looking. Maybe if I just go like that. Like that. Yeah, just just check out how your pieces look and how they're laying. And I think. I think that's good. That uh, would work. I see in the chat there, uh, Night Terrain is requesting that I leave uh, the email address for the Crazy Crafter channel in the description. I 100% will, so you can share share these photos and builds until I get this Facebook pay, group uh, up and running. 100%. And I 100%. just threw it in the chat as well. So. Oh, perfect. Are you going to be Yay. Uh, are you going to be sharing some photos today, um, Colin? Uh, sharing photos. What do you What do you mean? Say that. What do you mean? Sharing the photos. What photos, brother? Uh, are you Are you going to be showing some viewers' photos? Oh, today? you know, I, I I most certainly could. I could. Uh, uh, I could. Um, the The reason why I'm saying is that uh, a guy, John Woodley, 
I don't know if he's in today, but he sent me some photos during the week and asked if we could show them. Oh, we can. And I and I said yes to him, uh, <laughs> and then totally forgot to tell you about it. Well, we t we can. This is something that um, I, you know, one of the things that I'm going to set up, and I, I again, I wanted to do it this week, and uh, the the weeks the week jumps away from me like it does. Um, uh, but it's going to be a lot easier once I get the Facebook group set up. Uh, something that I'm, I I uh, I really I really like um, over at the pickle jar, um, which um, uh, Josh Josh joined us uh, and he and Wendy were here earlier from the Chilling War Gamers Network. But they've got a great live stream set up and they um, they always share their their builds and they always he just goes to he shares he's got like a browser capture set up in his stream and he just goes to the to the facebook group and yeah, everyone can comment comment below in the post for the day and it's it's perfect so it will be so much easier to showcase all this once i just build that so 100 percent. but yeah send it to me michael and then i'll work on that i'll 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 happily throw throw um that slideshow together so if you're out there right now and you can you want to send it to the crazy crafter channel 1983 at gmail uh i can i can certainly post that up there you've got about three about well, let's say like five minutes to do it if uh, in five minutes i'll start gathering all the stuff together and we'll put the slideshow together um also in chat we had a couple of of uh custom paint names come in uh moira blue gray and grime green Ooh. Uh, Ooh. From and Damien, Ooh. I think I would probably end up with something like I'm out of ideas gray. Like right? Like, I don't, like, I don't know. Let's just make it gray. Let's just make it gray. I love it. That's usually what I go for. I love Michael. it. Oh, that's Ooh. great. I like grime green. I like all those suggestions, guys. Those are great. Grime green. There you go. That's a good one. Grime green's a good one. <laughs> Every medieval stone wall in your collection. Like I'm just thinking of like all the things like the gray, the gray. Every, I don't know gray. Like that's a really good one because it's just yeah. stonework. It's it can it's everything. It's everything, like, isn't it, Danny? Or like uh, <laughs> it's outside of a house. So tan, right? Like, <laughs> like, so right? tan. <laughs> tan? <laughs> Oh, that's too fun. Question mark? Oh, I love it. I l love love it. Oh, Good. man. Well, I think this is about going to be as good as it's going to get. But anyhow, everything's pinned. You got your pull points. See how it's kind of showing a little bit of detail. Now, this will look a lot different once I cut it. That's when it really that and paint it you know right now it's kind of but the big thing is, is to to see you, you you want that cloth to kind of hang naturally on your shape you know so you want it to be tight on it in your all your corners and that's what will really make it look good you know so i'm kind of pushing all this in and that's good i'm going to cut when i cut i'll cut along this here i'll cut right along there and it'll be good good yeah, so enough I I opted for experimentation and I tried a couple things out on this nice. process. Nice. And uh, one really nice thing is that the lid is removable. So once mine utterly fails, which I expected it just totally did, I will throw <laughs> it away and do what John did. Um, <laughs> mine was it's... not working right at all. So. Yeah, it's easy. I mean, and you know, here's the thing with this, like I was saying, just try to get it to sit naturally, get your, your secure points. Uh, just play with it, but keep putting putting your brush in water, and just like I said, you can just kind of manipulate it, move your move your uh, your wrinkles wherever you want. Once you like it where it is, just leave it alone. Now, what's going to happen? This inside here ain't going to dry. The outside will. The inside won't. You're going to have to pull this off. I'm trying to think. When I did it, I trimmed it. Then I pulled. Yeah, I trimmed it, and then I pulled the saran wrap off. This inside here won't dry, and it's it's going to move on you. That's okay. Don't freak out if it starts to, like, mm. turn inside out and stuff because all you're going to do is 
once you cut it with a sharp exacto you're going to come in here or you're going to actually start to lift everything out and you're going to come in here and cut it however you want scissors or whatever and you get the shape that you want uh this thing's going to move all over don't worry about it because when you're done you're going to take that piece and stick it right back on there and you're going to let it dry some more because it's still going to be wet underneath because of the way oh. this is you see what i'm saying so then you're going to set this back on there kind of push it get it where you want it then let it dry and it'll dry up the rest of the way then you can go in underneath it and, and put mod podge wood glue stiffen it up you can even paint the outside or uh add more glue to the outside too but don't freak out whenever this thing starts to move on you because it it's going to move on you relax keep painting yeah 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 don't it ain't the and also you're going to get air bubbles that's a good thing to you're going to see air bubbles take a pen i use you can see i use pens all the times so. huh but just come in here poke some holes if you've got like a hellacious air bubble it just don't look right poke some holes and just like that window tinting when you put window tinting on there you go and it'll come right out and then get your wrinkles there's a there's a homebrew spell hellacious air bubble yep oh, we've, got, uh, we've uh night terrain is also suggesting dry brush wash gray and bradley who is my brother full disclosure uh and we have a very similar sense of humor uh suggests the gray i have the biggest bottle of gray yeah, yeah. <laughs> indeed and of course how come i didn't put the two together bradley west there it is there it is that would be I've, been, I've been talking about the live stream for you know weeks and weeks now he's like uh, like I, i'm coming and i'm like thank you for joining yay thanks thanks Thanks, uh, thanks, Bradley, for for joining us on the stream today. Your brother has has uh, may help make this uh, whole process a whole lot easier with his phenomenal ideas. And then uh, also, um, you can t you maybe Bradley can give us an account. How many gremlins does Danny actually have under his table to help him every week? That's what I want to know. That's the real meat and potatoes. That's what I want to know. Okay, let me switch over here. I got my uh, base coat, almost all my base coat on that, but I'm going to take a pause right now. Uh, Michael, did you send me that photo? I've, uh, it's a little set of photos, yep. I've just sent them to you G'day. on Facebook. G'day. John Woodley. All right, let me transition back here. It's a castle build. Ooh, castle build. In fact, let me just check because there was one other photo with the lights off that he took that looked really cool. I'll forward that to you as well. Forward it to me, please. Um, I can actually, this is what I need to do. I can start setting this up here. Let's go. Oh, yeah, this is John Woodley who is a friend of mine from the Tabletop Crafters Guild. We chat a lot on Facebook, send each other our works and progresses to just look at. Nice. Pretty chill guy. He's got some good stuff. OK. I'll be uh, looking for time, Colin. Pretty good. Or... We're all right. I mean, we've got probably about another 10, 15 minutes max before we should start wrapping it up. Okay. Well, this is the uh, the paint colors that I used. So, burn umber. All this, except for this, of course. You know, this is Americana. Apple barrel, brown oxide, chestnut, and territorial beige. Ooh, ter and there, there it is. is. This is just your your burn number painted on to it. But yeah, I mean, I was just going to just kind of dry brush now because the we pretty much did everything from start to finish. Now I'm just going to kind of, I'm just going to fool around now. Fool yep. around, my I mean, friend. I, I didn't even get onto the, I didn't get onto the roof at all today. Uh, I'm, I'm focusing on getting the main part of the wagon built, making sure that the wheels go round 
then uh, I'll do the, the, the top part um, at another stage. Okay, so that's the last photo sent through to you now, Colin. Okay. Ooh, this is looking pretty cool. I like that. Man. Got some really cool stuff that he's, that he's built. I'll show a couple works in progress. There's so many. Um, this is what will be cool too. Like as you guys send up and we get the Facebook group going, like, cause there's so many cool photos that Michael just sent me from John Woodley's build. Um, you'll be able to check all it, all it out. Like it's just some really, really cool stuff here. Uh, so John, I have a question for you. Yeah. Do you uh you you do you enjoy hanging out every every week on the stream with us? Uh oh, yeah. In? yeah. I agree. It's my favorite time of the week too. And in order uh to make sure that you don't miss out on any any of uh any of those um uh streams when we go live, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Uh turn on the bell notification, you'll be notified when uh, when we go live, we're here every Sunday, and again, this this stream is dedicated to you guys out there, all of your crafts that uh, you're building and working on, and I think it's 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 definitely it is a highlight of of my week for sure. Whenever I get to come on and hang out with Michael, Daniel, John, whether he's in the chat or on the stream with us, every one of you out there in the community that comes out and participates in in the stream. Um, it's, it's just been, it's been amazing and we continue to grow and grow and all of your support means the world to me and this channel and to Michael and Daniel and I, um, we really, really appreciate it. And it is, uh, a blast working with you guys. Um, and also if you guys have yep. ideas or recommendations of other folks that you want to see come on the stream, put that out there to us, right? Um, we're, we're open, like uh, we're always on the lookout yep. for, for, um, for fellow crafters to come no on idea. and share their work. Just, just, just email us and, and let us know, let us know who we should bring on. Should we bring you on? Right. We're, we're working on Tina. We're working on her. She's, she's, uh, yep. she, I, I, I have a feeling she's, she's coming like this is, this is going to be fantastic. Um, we're getting her wearing her down slowly. Yeah. Oh, dude. Yes, yes, Josh. Josh from the pickle jar sent me some of his goblins from. Uh, I think this is from his blood bowl that that he was finishing up and working on earlier. Oh, these are cool. Oh, cool, 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 cool. Um, let's see. Is there anything else? Um, for. for... You've got the uh, little shelves, like the close-ups that I did uh this week available uh, i think those turned out pretty good Shit, put them put them put them in the yeah. chat brother i i th are those are those in those are already in our chat i just need to find them yeah i, I can okay. i can resend i think or actually no I, I took them in messenger so I don't, I don't think they're in my picture stream no worries i can i can and the one with find it. the one with the little um uh the little ink quill looks great i love the the little ink quills that you made yeah. Oh, that looks awesome. I like the scrolls too. Yeah, the Thank scroll, you. the the rolled up tape was a really brilliant idea too, um, Daniel. I, I really liked that. I thought that was great. Yeah, I'm sure it's. I, I'm sure I'm not. You know, the first person to come up with it, but sure. um, uh, but if ladies and gents, last week we did like little miniature things to to accessorize your your sets, and um, I, I sort of had an epiphany while I was proctoring a test i had nothing to do except sit and watch my screen while kids took a test and i started rolling up little tubes of the world's cheapest masking tape and it is it is it is scrolls folks it is it is perfect so um wish i'd had that piece of advice before the stream last week but i didn't so. <laughs> oh these are great it's fa fantastic to 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 discover it as we go along it's 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 all groovy i'm gonna share Ooh, i'm gonna share your uh your window here too i'm sharing it uh yeah like the 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 glass that you came up with in your windows too danny i'm sharing that too because it's dope thank you thank you okay yay i've got wheels 
I've got wheels on my wagon. What's the ETA on rolling out that slideshow? Uh, it's about uh, just about uh, one minute and 30 seconds away. Fantastic. Yes, yeah, 90 seconds. 90 seconds from happening. Um, we're going to get and that here. So, so Blood Bowl is a very popular ga uh, games workshop game. You're right. It does 100% sound like a rejected college football football uh <laughs> january festivity like i don't know we got the orange bowl we got the tostitos something or other bowl how about like i don't know blood has anyone done that one <laughs> oh my gosh yeah it's a uh i've seen that game get played a couple times it's pretty wild that's a different game with the tabletop yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to check it out at some point. It's it's definitely it's definitely on my radar, and I'm hoping once things go back to normal, when my friendly local gaming store uh, starts putting things together, I'm hoping they they do something with Blood Bowl. I I, I I like I like small games. I like uh, I find that 40k in in its in its intended size is just too big for me. Um, so I, I really do like the smaller skirmish games and. And Blood Bowl looks fun, 100%. Yeah, I'm the same way. I kind of, I don't, you know, it's, and I'll tell you, like, you know, them big games and everything. I like something smaller, kind of like, uh, uh, well, the arena for uh, Warhammer. And I, I kind of like games sizes like that. I like, um, I, I like Rangers of Shadow Deep too, games that are like that, uh, that are co op. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I need to get a copy of Rangers of Shadow Deep. Um, I I have tricked a few people, including my brother in the chat today, into playing Frostgrave, and uh, I like that Rangers appears to have so, a similar mechanic, while yep. uh, allowing you to not just be fighting each other. So um, yeah, yeah, you can kind of team up and and instead of just battling out with your buddy, you know, you've got to work together to get through. Uh, to get through that match, you know, I think is really cool. 100%. All right. I will actually kind of go wrong a little bit. We... All right. We've got the, uh, the, uh, slideshow up here. It's running. It's looking good. We've got some, uh, some cool builds up here. Uh, Tina shared, um, this build, this is a work in progress. Is this Moria that you're working on Tina? You have to tell us what that one is. There's uh, Josh uh, Mackin from the Pickle Jar sharing his uh, goblins from his Blood Bowl paints this week. Those are looking mighty fine. I love that orange armor on there. Danny, here's your desks from the photos that you were sharing last week from our miniature furniture builds. And then you're going to have to talk to us about how you did a little bit of this, uh, the window work for, for these windows and the doors here. These look really, really, really good. Um, and okay. then this is John Woodley's uh, castle build. Holy crap, John Woodley. That's looking mighty fine. That's looking baller. Yeah. I like that a uh, little before. I, I, I chose the two quick ones, Michael, to kind of showcase, like, here's the final yeah. product, but this is, like, his work in progress from uh, ahead of time. Just phenomenal, John. Really, really bang-up job. That's that's some, some cool stuff. I want to build so much big terrain like that that's epic, but I just... I, 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 need, I need more shelf space. I need to organize my... I need to clear out shelf space for more big terrain like that. Um, so, uh, uh, Tina, uh, keep an eye on the chat there from Tina. I want to, I want to know if that's Moria that she's building. Uh, it is, it is Moria. It is Moria. That's looking, that's going to be epic. She's working on a Moria, Moria build right now from Lord of the Rings. It's going to be epic. Uh, we saw, I got to see some of those columns yesterday. Uh, Tina yeah. also showed, showed me, uh, she's carving, uh, dwarven pillars, uh, pretty, pretty, pretty fiercely there, Michael. Um, and she added lights to them. They glow. They look know, way so to, cool. Way to, show, way to show me up. <laughs> That's the whole point though, right? To take that, let them take something and run with it. Um, you know what I love about her pillars is that every face that she has done is a little bit different. Yeah. And that's just like, but they all tie together in the same, but they've all got a fa different facial expression. And I... Yep. Um, Danny, talk to us a little bit about um, your windows here. Uh, how how uh, how you came about creating creating those windows and what you used uh, for to create that glass effect. That they look great. 
So um, that is, uh, I'm exploiting the laser again because. Uh, got to. It's what you got, brother. Yeah, if, if you got it, right? <laughs> um, and those are panels that have all been cut with the laser, and then all of the leaded glass, um, the, the, the crisscross lines, and then the stained glass stuff is uh, just partially scored in so it doesn't cut all the way through. And then uh, I did that with a, a bit of masking over the top of it, some masking tape. Right. And before I peeled the masking tape off, I hit it with spray paint. So all those places where I had scored filled in with black paint. And then um, then let it dry, obviously, and then peeled off the masking tape. And you're just left with the black paint and all of those little cut lines that were left. Super cool. And then um, for the little stained glass rosette above the the front door there um yeah. it's it's the same deal but i just came in and on the and i i just took sharpies i just have a pile of colored sharpies oh, nice. and uh colored in right over the um right over the the clear acrylic and it it stays transparent and um and makes an instant stained glass window so that's uh pretty cool i'm definitely going to be experimenting with that more i think super rad um i uh, what are you going to use to pop now what kind of remind me of the shop again like what are you going to populate you got a lot do you have a lot of shelf space in this build you gotta you're gonna you are you gonna populate all of the shelf space yeah so i've um i've been working on that i've got like uh the intention is to sort of make a a magic shop and so there will certainly be um, books uh, taking up some of those spaces. And I, I started um, pre-cutting in foam core some of those things. Yep. And um, and hopefully those work out nicely. Uh, additionally, uh, I started working on scrolls and stacks of paper. Um, because if you're playing 5e to the rules, um, every wizard needs to buy lots and lots of expensive paper and quills and yep. ink and stuff to update their spell book so I, I i don't see that present in a lot of the oh builds that i see often right but there if you had a magic shop I, I i presume you need a lot of uh a, a sort of a dedicated area to just writing stuff down because that is sort of a, a mechanical component of a 5e wizard uh so i'm going to try to devote an area to that and then, um, yeah, I on some of my frost grape soldier sprues, I have uh, so extra swords and ropes and things like that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make you know just prep general adventuring gear. Nice. I, I've got plans. I've got I've got some plans. Dude, uh, I also want to. Uh, it's gonna be super small on the scale, but I'd like to make uh, a a rack with where you could stand up. Uh, half a dozen wands oh of cool sort of like splayed out yeah 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 um yeah well it, it's it's gonna be a fun little ongoing project dude that that's gonna look great you're gonna have to keep sending this work work in progress photos on that uh that's that's gonna look that's gonna look amazeballs when it's done and then uh so uh questions on that i, I got asked I, I just use acrylic for the windows um and then i'm using chipboard for all of the the shelves and stuff mm. and then so night train is asking so hundreds of tiny square tape masks on the windows uh yes functionally that's what it ends up at but you can just scrape your fingernail across it and you just start pulling them off mm. so it's not like you have to individually peel off each of those uh things uh because that would make it 100 percent not worth it mm. um but yeah um and then uh i just just to comment again on josh's uh, goblins from from the rejected college football tournament it's so, That's good. Been, it's so it's pretty funny i like that so um, good. if you if you are interested in checking uh checking out a really cool live stream about uh painting miniatures and uh specifically dedicated to warhammer head over to the pickle jar and also uh, check out in the description below is the chilling war gamers link to the YouTube channel. They go live all the time and um, they do collective hangouts on tutorials. They talk about updates within um, tabletop gaming, um, all, all news related to that. The chilling war gamers network is a, is a great, is a great uh, site to check out. Definitely head on over there. Um, 
if you guys missed the stream last week, um, but uh, both both Michael and I, Nat One Videos and Crazy Craft are a part of the Chilling War Gamers Network, and we're looking forward to they they are uh, figuring out scheduling. They've got a lot of the the community is vast, uh, and uh, they they've got guests on their streams all the time, and they're looking forward to bringing Michael and I on eventually, which will it'll be fun to go over there on the Chilling uh, Chilling Gamers Network and hang out for sure. That'll be awesome. Um, but thank you for sharing those, Josh. Those, 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 those uh, Blood Bowl goblins would shred any NCAA team that I that I uh, can think of. <laughs> um, uh, and let's see. And Tina, thank you so much for for sharing your Moria build. Uh, more more to more to see for sure. I'm sure as the the stream progresses for that. Uh, and then John Woodley, thank you for sharing your castle with Michael. Please, anytime. Forge your forge your works on to me, uh, and soon hopefully you'll be able to post it in the Facebook group, and we will be able to um, show off the work all the time, which is the goal. Um, okay, John, talk to us. I see you've got the paint the the painting a uh, 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 set up there on your screen. Talk to us a little bit about kind of your mm -hmm. you want to talk a little bit about your paint scheme and the technique that you operate when we when you work the wagon. Yeah, when I did this one, I just, just real easy. I mean, just pretty much just started out with the burn umber, moved to the brown, uh, that's the chestnut, brown oxide, dry brush that for a little bit. And then I just moved to territorial beige. These are all apple barrel, you know. And then I just hit it here and there. I don't know if you could see, it's kind of with the reds, you know, just to mm -hmm. get a kind of a red kind of a look yep and pretty much then it's just just give it a quick wash then go back again and dry brush some more dry brush again until you start forcing them grains to come out and start mm -hmm. you know you start to bring bring all these back and bring everything to the foreground it might take a couple times i did the first wash on the steel here and that's going to have to dry that's going to take a while but once that dries i'll dry brush that maybe add another one maybe not maybe weather it a little bit you know what i mean looks good I, I, cool with it. yeah i think i think that's 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 my favorite thing to do with uh, the the paints you know the paint especially this is where all that texture comes into play as soon as you get that really good wood grain texture down um and you throw your washes on there and you start layering in all the, all the shadow within it that when you dry brush it it is going to pop and come to life um yep I really dig all. I really love all your wood grain texture um, that <clears throat> that you uh, that you put put on on this build, uh, John. Because it's something I guess, you know, we've done stone work on the sh on the stream here with you before, and I haven't had a chance to really see. I haven't seen a lot of the wood grain, and I really I'm di I'm digging it. It looks really good, brother. Yeah, yeah, and it's easy. I mean, it's it's easy to do. You know, just kind of just go in there and throw some <laughs> grains and something you look at your whole life. You know. Yeah. Yeah, just just kind of get in there and start and uh, see what you like and see what you don't like. Yep. Well, this is fantastic. Um, I'm really I'm really excited um, about about these wagons. This is this is going in my build book for sure. It's going in there. I'm sure it's going to make your way make your way into to everyone else's uh, inventory and the repertoire as well. I um, I did I did get this dry brushed and added uh the effect to the canvas here to see hopefully there it goes it should focus um but i really dig the the cheese cheese cloth cheese cloth man it's my new favorite new one of my new favorite materials that i'm that i'm currently working with but i really really yeah, uh, let me cool. see that uh colin hold yeah. on okay can you see it that looks good yeah yeah, cool, that right? looks, yeah, I like that. That's a pretty cool man. I'll tell you what, that would look like too, like tattered. Uh, I could just see that on buildings, all kinds of stuff. You could, really. you could shred it. Like it's going to be like the cheesecloth is going to be something I use a lot. You could shred it up and spread it out real apart, make it look like spider mm -hmm. webs. You could make mm -hmm. it look like burlap sacks for like your your market scattered terrain to make it look like bags of that. It's just, it's a really, it, once you layer a wash on it and I need to, I need to stop using my Agrax Earthshade because it, uh, it's so expensive, but like a homemade wash on it and then dry brushing it, the wash kind of hardens the cheesecloth, right? And it dries mm -hmm. up and then it really, all the small little fibrous details in the, within the cheesecloth 
really pop when you dry brush it thereafter. Right? Mm-hmm. And it, it's hard to see on camera. I need to take some better photos of it and post it up on social media so you guys can see. But man, cheesecloth, bomb diggity. Bomb diggity. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what we used to also use for a wash, and I don't think anyone's really doing this years. Now, this is back when I was going to school and stuff around 2000, is we were showed to use uh, 97% rubbing alcohol, uh, okay, believe it or not, and uh, and whatever paint that you want, rather your apple barrel, or if you want like a chalky look, use chalk pastels and a little bit of dish soap to add as a flow aid and believe it or not it actually works pretty good it does it uh, right now okay it, it does i mean it, it it has a good look to it for as cheap as this but see the the alcohol is nice because it evaporates fast right you know that's the kind of the key is having that evaporate like that yeah i haven't done much of the alcohol only the acetone i like i like the acetone but man you got to be just like any of it, you gotta be, you gotta be spare. Uh, you gotta, you gotta use it sparingly because it'll, it'll, it'll for your eat, texture. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah it'll, eat, it'll eat it up quick. It'll eat it up yeah. quickly. Um, I tell you what, the trick is uh, with when you're texturing is watch the size of brush that you use. Bigger the brush, the more is going to be in there. Whenever you touch yep. that, and really wipe it off. You know, you really want to yep. kind of wipe that down. You know. Yep. Uh, your brother in the ch- in the chat here, Danny, is suggesting that uh, using cheese cl- uh, to stiffen the cheesecloth with Elmer's glue and water to to self support. A lot of weird stuff you can do with that. Yeah, that you know, I actually might use that this week, Bradley. Uh, so next week on the stream, we've got uh, Scotty McFarlane uh, coming in from the DMs DMs Craft. DM Scotty's coming in, and he's gonna be building. We're gonna be. I, I'm probably I'm actually going to start working on it today, um, and we're going to be making a shambling mound on the stream next week, which is definitely going to involve all the prep ahead of time. Like, yeah. um, super excited about that. Uh, yeah, it's gonna and- be, that's going to be fun, and I think I'm going to try to use it, Bradley. I may use some of the. Che- I hadn't thought about wrapping the cheesecloth, but to get some nice texture on on the uh, on the shambling mound next week, I think that cheesecloth wrapping it around there will look really really cool, man. I'm I bet try if you, that. you shred it and get a lot of loose fibers yeah, on there. Yeah, yeah, uh, and, yeah. And using the Elmer's glue and the, even the, the the cheapest PVA that you've got in water is 100% um, um, 100% just like a theater trick, right? For like sizing flats. Yes. We use that in conjunction with muslin all the time. Yep. yep. Um, and then uh, uh, Tina is asking the very, very valid question, uh, <laughs> uh, what is cheesecloth? And so uh, mm. it, it often just makes its, its way into crafting, um, but in general, it's it's yeah, f- uh, it's a really loose weaved uh, wo- woven fabric that you would use to wrap a, a cheese curd and, and strain out the the excess uh, liquid when you are making cheese. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's it's a uh, tight enough weave that it keeps everything sort of bundled together, but a loose enough weave that it's not going to hold to. Uh, uh, hold in a a water droplet and mm-hmm. lets it fall out. So you, you use it for uh, condensing your your balls of of uh, cheese curd uh, when you are making uh, cheese on your own and not a, uh, a a traditional like commercial sort of thing. So right. yeah, and it it's super loose woven and and really really functional and a great crafting supply. But uh, it it comes from cheese making, legitimate cheese making. Cheese making. If Amy was here on the stream. Uh... Being a Wisconsin native, she would have totally like been all excited to explain cheesecloth. She would have like, she might have even been like, like hacked the Zoom and like jumped on to talk about it. She would have gotten so excited to talk about the cheese. Um, now, I, now I want cheese. I don't know about you, but I want cheese now. I'm also hungry. I so. had cheese. <laughs> Did you have cheese? You had cheese already. Um, well, let's see. Let's check out. Let's check out the builds. Where do we? Uh, where are we at here with uh, with with everyone? Michael. Oh my God, Michael! Look at yours. Good grief! Look at yours. Yours is looking uh, fantastic. Here, hold on, I want to see it. I want to. See. Uh, oh shoot! Oh, I don't think I can see anything, can I? You can't. Well, uh, you, you should be able to on the on the zoom. Oh, maybe not. Uh-huh. Can you see it on the zoom? I'm not sure. Uh-uh. I can. I can only uh, see you, Colin. I see. Yeah. 
I'll well, send some. I don't, okay. That's I okay. don't have anything to show because my my thing is currently sitting under a pile of mush tissue that is uh, <laughs> trying to to dry up. And it so it looks like a big pile of mush. I do have I do have four teeny tiny wheels uh, that are, are waiting, um, and that's that's what I have to show. And possibly using these popsicle sticks as the uh, the, the forks coming off the front, right. but uh, that's to be determined based on how that mush turns out. Well, I'm excited to see see the mush. I'm I'll show you mine here. I'm, I'm I've been adding a little bit of more paint uh and detail to it i've i've got almost all the base i think i do have all the base base down um but i've got my second my second um wagon here with uh, all its little little uh, uh copper uh, i hit it up i used um i used this uh uh this model model color vallejo copper uh some mini paint on on it for the accents on the on the metal on the wagon it looks really cool but I still, I'm going to try to, I, I'm, I'm going to try to build the, um, the cheesecloth canvas on the top side. I also had another crazy thought too, which was, uh, you, we were chatting, we, we had like a, a little mini, uh, we were chatting with some, some past, uh, friends from the stream, um, uh, yesterday on zoom and, uh, Derek, Derek's, uh, Spanish shingles. Like if you bit up, did up like a little roof, I was talking, you want to talk about like Mercedes Benz and BMW doing some individual shingles like and making it all all uh, all prim and proper that way uh, on the top of the wagon would look pretty epic too um, that would look very cool i want to do like a little i was thinking your your bmw version john should have like little stairs as well for the carriage to like uh so you can get up in on one side i thought that'd be cool i really like the idea i thought about that too uh who was it was it um was it night terrain that was thinking about uh someone had the suggestion about cutting off half of it and having an open open air wagon for like um a market a market wagon all those would oh, be, yeah, would be definitely. great super cool yep. and well, someone yeah yeah that would be awesome and you know uh if you go on that i think they have one that's like that if you go on that uh eso elder scrolls online fashion and uh i think got all kinds of, of, of uh different vehicles and, and wagons and mm. swords and monoliths and buildings and churches. And you could just go on there and, and check things out. And uh, I think they have one that the side, this side here will actually flip up and you could put two stakes in and put a table. So it's kind of like a traveling merchant. They kind of go to each town and then they just open that side up kind of like a hot dog stand or something and set your table up. Hey, you know what I mean? That's kind of cool. And they would live inside of that wagon, you know? Yep. Yeah. Um, head with that one. But I love the, I love it right now. Uh, looks like um, a crazy crafter head with a nat one body. 100%. Yep. When you look at the screen, you've got, you've got <laughs> the body and, and Colin's shoulder sitting on top of it. Yep. It is perfect. It is <laughs> all right hilarious. you gotta you gotta do like you gotta do like a little uh a little a little um whack. oh yeah do to do do to do do to do do to do oh to do do to do hey <laughs> oh my gosh oh my gosh i'm so glad you pointed that out night night terrain well if anyone you know as you're watching the recording from home there's your there's your special easter egg treat at the at home we planned it like this we'll just we should we should always like uh, try to stack stack funny shapes on top of each other for the stream. Very yeah, entertaining. 100%. <laughs> all right, everyone. This has been fantastic, as always, hanging out with all of you. Uh, John Hosenfeld. Um, be sure to follow him at, at Hosencrafter on... <laughs> I see you, Michael. I see you right now. Be sure to... <laughs> I can't even do it if you're, you're gonna make me laugh. I can't look at you. Be sure to follow oh, no. Hosen Crafter at on Instagram at Hosen Crafter. Uh, be sure if you haven't done so, follow uh, the growing community over at Nat One Videos. Um, give uh, make sure if you haven't subscribed to Michael's channel, please do so. Um, you can go over uh, and watch his daughter eat Mod Podge. Well, she doesn't do it on uh, the video, but you can you can uh, watch watch that awesome video from this week and listen to some really cool music. Um, I'm also excited from your stream yesterday because uh, I now found out that you have an album in progress, which I'm really I really want to hear. That's being uh, that's being yep. uh, put together. So uh, I want I'm anxious to hear more about that. I want to hear more of your music. 
Um, and then also mm. check out the Chilling War Gamers Network uh, YouTube. And last but not least, if you have not subscribed to this channel and you enjoy this content where we feature live terrain tutorials every Sunday with someone from the crafting community, please click the like button. Share this video with your friends. Subscribe. Turn on the bell notifications. We would love to craft with you. We'd love to, ha may who knows, maybe feature you on the show. If you hang out long enough, it's going to happen. Poor Tina knows all about it. She's coming on the stream. It's happening. All right, y'all. Thank you all so much. Um, be well. Until the next time, be sure to craft your passion daily. Uh, we look forward to seeing you um, this coming week, and we look forward to having DM Scotty from the DM's Craft on next week where we build a shambling mound. All right, everyone. Be well. Cheers. Here, can I get some dancing hands, Michael? Get me some dancing hands. Nonsense. <laughs> Utter nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>